Welcome to the Exotic Pet Collective. My name is Richard. Appreciate you joining me today. We've got, uh, it's the first podcast in 2021. Took a little break there during the holidays. It's awesome to be back. Today, we've got an exciting guest. It's actually her second time on the podcast. Uh, first time, we just kind of had to throw it out because I screwed up recording the audio so poorly. But first, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's podcast. Those are my friends over at Tarantula Crips. They're huge supporters of the Tarantula Collective YouTube channel and of this podcast and pretty much anything that I do. So a huge shout out to them. If you're looking for high-end acrylic enclosures for your tarantulas, scorpions, or pretty much any other invert, you need to check out Tarantula Crips. I use them myself. I am a huge fan of them. The acrylic is much thicker than most of the other acrylic enclosures out there. It's extremely clear, but the best part is it has these sliding locking lids. They use very powerful magnets to keep those lids locked into place, and they go in on track, so there's no way for the tarantula or scorpion or whatever inverts you have to really pry those open. I've been using them for months now. I really enjoy them. They look amazing. They work really well. I've had no issues with them, so you should definitely check those out. And right now, if you go to tarantulacribs.com and use the code TCollective10 at checkout, you will get 10% off your entire order. Whether you're looking for some awesome display enclosures for your spiderlings or you're looking for a large enclosure for your adult tarantulas, they've got that and everything in between. So definitely check them out. They even have stuff for the enclosures like hides, water dishes, plants, just all kinds of decorations. They even have some skulls. So go to tarantulacribs.com, use that code TCollective10, save yourself 10% and help support the community. So huge thanks to Tarantula Cribs for believing in this podcast and believing in the YouTube channel and doing so much to support this. It really means a lot to me. You guys are awesome. Our guest today is the creator of the Balfour Communal Club on Facebook. She uh, also has her own YouTube channel called Pet Rock and Roll and there's a lot of exciting things going on uh, you know, throughout this year that it's, it's going to be very fun to talk about. The thing I'm most excited about is she is the channel host for the Fatal Fangs 3 feeding competition. So uh, please welcome back to the podcast and to the podcast for the first time, Amy from Pet Rock and Roll. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be back. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. And I appreciate you being willing to come back on after I uh, completely screwed up the last one we did. <laughs> Absolutely. How could I not have? <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I felt very bad. Uh, I had, we, we had sat, we, what, maybe two hours we had talked. It feels like it was uh, an yeah. hour and a half, two hours, something like that. And yeah, I went was, to record, yeah. like, to, <laughs> I went to edit it and. I had chosen, essentially I had recorded the entire thing on the microphone on my laptop instead of any of the other mics I have sitting around here. So it, it sounded, it sounded pretty terrible, but. Well, these, these things it. happen, don't they? You know, <laughs> we live and yeah, learn, we live and learn. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so how, how are you? How are things going out there? You're in the, the, the UK, correct? I am in the UK. Yeah. It's very cold here at the minute. I'm not enjoying the weather at all i'm not a fan of winter i like the summer better but other than that yeah it's it's, it's cool <laughs> it's good <laughs> for me obviously it's the <laughs> afternoon for you it's the first thing in the morning <laughs> yeah see I, I enjoy the cold weather so this is this is my time of the year i like i like it being cold outside and kind of cooler in the house but yeah, yeah I, you have really upset all my tarantulas and reptiles. They were not happy that I turned their lights on about an hour early this morning. Oh, <laughs> Got I'm some sorry. confused looks. <laughs> a ball python stuck its head out like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Are you going to film me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think he thought he was getting some more mice. I, uh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> mine that do that but only he thinks about yeah mine do that but only if i uh hair dry my hair because i warm the rats up with the hair dryer the minute <laughs> i get the hair dry out they're straight out like what what another one I'm like, no <laughs> i'm just drying my hair <laughs> confusing your poor snakes oh, no. when we first got him he's a banana calico ball python we got him uh, a little over a year ago and he wouldn't eat like i was really worried i was like this damn snake won't eat I didn't even want the snake. My wife wanted it, but, and, uh, I, I was, I was concerned. I was going to like force feed it or something. Uh, and then I, I, I guess maybe he just needed to acclimate and get settled. <laughs> I tried, yep. uh, warming up hot, uh, the frozen thawed with a hairdryer. Like you were just talking about, he wouldn't touch him. 
Uh, I tried a couple other methods of warming them up. Had no interest. I tried feeding them live mice because the guy we got them from, the breeder said he's only been eating live, so you're going to have to transition them. He didn't want anything to do with live. I was like, so you're just going to starve to death. Is this like some kind of weird protest? <laughs> but they they really yeah. do do that though. I mean, I I've got um like I bred I bred mine, so the babies that I had, uh, three of them actually wouldn't eat it at all. They dropped down to silly weights of twenty nine grams, something around that mark, because they just wouldn't eat. And I had to assist yeah. feed them, and I assist fed them for five months, and then all of a sudden it was like their instinct was switched on, like a light switch, and then they started yeah. strike feeding, and now. They're beautiful and they're huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think what I ended up doing was uh, I just, I was, it, it was way too big of a snake at the time for pinky mice, but I was like, I'm going to try it. I've got some for my milk snake and it would eat that. So I was like, well, we'll just eat, feed you like four or five pinky mice. <laughs> <laughs> One and after slowly kind of works it up. And now I, now it's, he, all he does is eat. Like, I don't think he cares about anything else in life. <laughs> Good. That's good. It, is it a male? It is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You wait until it's then uh, mature. <laughs> it's like a mature <laughs> what, male tarantula. That? They go through stages oh, yeah? of fasting. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought they would be going into a brumation because it's you know it's cold. They my snakes did that last year. They just kind of hid for you know months and didn't really eat much. But so far they have not. They have not done that. Are, oh. are your snakes? Do they go into brumation or anything? Not really, no, because it uh, the temperatures don't drop that much inside the house, and obviously the thermostats they always they pulse thermostats, so they sit at the same temperature um, all the time. But the males, yeah, especially I've got a, an eighteen year old male, and he will fast like you wouldn't believe. As soon as that breeding season hits, he's like, "No, I'm not interested in food. <laughs> That's not what I want." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go silly amounts of time you know six months without eating yeah. until he finally realizes he ain't getting any and he'll eat <laughs> <laughs> so you you bred ball pythons for a while correct i did yeah so um that the, the male that i was just talking about i bred him with a big female that i've got um they are the standard wild type so they're not uh any morph um, but I had a feeling that the female may have had some kind of uh, hidden gene in her just because her coloration is a little bit different from your normal royal type coloration. Um, but I don't think the male had any other gene in him. So actually all of the babies came out as just royal types, but they were all beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the patterning on them is slightly different, though, to your normal keyhole shapes on a, on a royal type. They're more kind of pixelated. Um, but as... Whether there's another morph going on there, I don't know. I think the only way that I would yeah. find out is to pair back one of the sons to the mother, and I'm not particularly kind of keen on doing that. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that okay. was the advice I was given by uh, by uh, snake breeders, and I was just like, ah, I don't think, I don't think I want to do that. But but I have got um, plans to breed my purple passion in the future. I'm just waiting for her to. Kind of get to age and weight and then find the perfect male for her to because i'm looking to get a uh, hopefully a super phantom blackhead um to put with her and hopefully hit some good combos with that that'd be really exciting but yeah at the minute she just chills she's a beautiful snake yeah gotcha so you breathe what do you do with the snakes when you breathe them do you like retail them do you sell them do you have like a a marketplace online marketplace to sell ball pythons or I how does that work out there i didn't with mine um i actually gave uh some of my babies away um with uh, two two people that i knew would be able to look after them they knew what they was doing and they're pretty local to me so uh, you know we always can talk and stuff and i can pop around and see them when i can um but no i didn't okay. sell them but there is a it's called the morph market over here mm -hmm. so you can sell your snakes on that but yeah i didn't <laughs> <laughs> i was just like hey do you want a snake <laughs> one of my <laughs> friends actually had uh what is she? she had three. <laughs> oh wow she was like yeah i'll have all of them 
So yeah. how many babies do they have? In a, is that a clutch or what, what do they call? Yeah, so it's called a clutch. Um, mine okay. had seven. There were seven eggs and all seven hatched, which was fantastic. Um, but they can range. They can range from five to, I've, I think I've seen um, somebody have a clutch that was about 15 eggs. Yeah, a huge amount. I think it all depends on whether it's the snakes, the females first time in laying Um you know, a bit like tarantulas, sometimes you can find, especially with Balfouri, Monocentropus Balfouri, uh, a lot of people say that when it's a female's first time laying a sack, it's quite small. Uh, and then as you kind of breed over and over with that female, the sack gets bigger and bigger and bigger each time. So, so maybe it's kind of the same. I'm not too sure. Mm. But I've only I've only kind of done it the once. I, I haven't done it. I haven't done it any other times. But incubating the eggs okay. is pretty cool incubating them and candling it, them and then you get to see like the little snakes moving around in the eggs that's pretty wicked to see yeah <laughs> and then oh, when they wow. hatch i remember the morning i got up looked in the incubator i was like oh my god you little heads come out the eggs that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> so why do you take the eggs why do, why don't you let the mother incubate them you why can you put them in an we can let the the mother incubate but you've got to keep the humidity spot on um because you, if you too much humidity, then the eggs are going to mould. Well, not a lot, enough humidity, then they're going to collapse because they're going to go kind of hard and solid, and then it's not going to work. So incubating them yourself, it just you got it more reliable. You you pretty guaranteed that you're going to get success uh, in hatching those eggs. So yeah, I, I have seen people do it where they maternally in, incubate them, but like I said, you've got to make sure that you're confident in being able to keep the setup on point. And I wasn't confident that I'd be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I, yeah, I know nothing about breeding snakes. That's that's why I was asking. I always wondered that because it seemed like it was the easiest. I, I was like, is she going to eat them? Or, you know, why, why do people keep taking them away and incubating them? But I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I think, so, in the, I think in the wild, though, as soon as they are pretty much hatched, they will kind of disperse. They're not, they don't need to be with mum. Mum doesn't yeah. really do anything for them. Um, she doesn't like catch the, the mice and bring them back for them or anything like that so yeah I think it's just it's not always necessary but taking the eggs away from a female can be tricky the females don't always like that yeah they're quite yeah, they're quite protective of the eggs but yeah when they're hatched they're like okay see you later <laughs> <laughs> she did her job and she is done that's Walking it <laughs> exactly <laughs> So you mentioned uh, the Imbalfouri, Socotra Island, Blue Baboon Tarantulas. Yes. Um, you actually started a Facebook group called the Balfouri Communal Club. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, wh why did you start a group? What is it about? So I started that group because I was getting into the uh, Imbalfouri and I, I found that I just couldn't find enough about them to satisfy me. <laughs> um, there isn't an awful lot known about them. I don't think there's been any kind of studies done of them in their natural habitat in the wild. Um, and I thought, well, maybe what we can do is gather some, you know, knowledge from people's experiences. Um, and I thought, you know, you've got all these tarantula groups, which is, they're fantastic, but posts get lost within the groups, especially the most active ones, you know, like Raggy Tees, that's really active. You post in there, your post's gone <laughs> within an hour. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to create a group that's species specific and it's just for M. Balfouri. And it's doing really well. It seems like the people seem to love it because we can talk just purely Balfouri. Um, and some people's posts that they put in, the pictures, everything's just amazing. And just learning from each other, you know, somebody will say, well, I did this, you know, this work for me. Uh, and I, mm -hmm. I, even me, I'm like, no way, I wouldn't have even thought of doing that. So I've learned a lot from having the group. Um, can Can you give me like a, a specific example of something you learned that maybe you would not have known without, you know, having access to that group? Um. I think one of the recent things that has been put in the group is some a member had posted about uh, using a heat mat and noticing that once he started using the heat mat on the side of the enclosure, his communal mm -hmm. were coming out in the evening and actually congregating around where that heat mat was, which to me said, okay, they are enjoying the heat. Whereas, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think that because most tarantulas you don't need to have a heat mat with. 
Um, but obviously, Balfour, seem to like to be at a higher temperature. He's also, uh, I, I, forgive me, I don't remember his name, but it was a great post because he'd said that he what he's trialling is that he's now taken the mat away, but yet the M. Balfouri are still coming out in the evening and going to the same spot. And he's asking himself whether oh. is that habit or have they learnt it? And now he's going to switch it up and put the uh, heat mat on the other side of the enclosure to see whether he can kind of recreate the same thing. Uh, with them going over to the other side of the enclosure. So just little things like that. I mean, it's not necessarily experimenting, but it's us all trying different things and then sharing what we've done with each other and hopefully, yeah. you know, helping each other along the way. So Yeah, that's one of the things I like the most about the tarantula hobby. Um, I mean, I, I really like the, this aspect, but it's also sometimes the most frustrating aspect. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's so little known about a lot of these species as far as, like, keeping them in captivity. So, you know... It, it's, it's constantly changing and evolving. And I think that's why it's great to have Facebook groups like, you know, it, like the Balfour communal club, or I think there's like some postal etheria specific groups and I, they seem to be popping up a lot on Facebook and yeah, they do. Uh, really kind of honing that husbandry down for these specific species. Yeah. I think it's really important cool. that we all learn from each other. Just, you know, experience and yeah. knowledge really, isn't it? So, yeah. I mean, I remember, 20 years ago getting my first tarantula and back then it was pretty much the tarantula keeper's guide like you i, I think i checked that book out of the library or something <laughs> like that i didn't even buy it i was like i'll just i'll just and and in that book it was talking about uh you know people were keeping tarantulas on vermiculate like just straight vermiculate or uh yep. what was the other one it was like bark like uh kind of like you would use for a snake yeah um, like a, and, a, a beach chip the, you know the chip yeah. the chip things yeah <laughs> yeah and i had uh, i had read that book and initially i think that's how, what i was keeping mine on and that's also what the pet store had sold me on was like this repti bark kind of stuff and um then I, I i don't remember it was so long ago and i have burnt so many brain cells i don't remember exactly but somewhere online i had came across uh some information this was like before facebook was even really a thing i don't even know if, if myspace was really all that active but it it would they were suggesting using um like essentially potting soil and uh yeah you know, I, I so i got a, a mixture of or not potting soil it was like topsoil had you know like chunks of wood in it like it, it wasn't ideal but it was better than reptibark so yeah. that's what i was i was using for a while and but at the, it was an incandescent light on top of the enclosure was still suggested as you know proper husbandry so i remember I had, I had gone to lowe's and bought one of those like work lights you know what i mean like the cheap little kind of i mean something like you would use for a reptile and just screw yeah. it in, an, in like a 60 watt light bulb or something and had it <laughs> kind of pointing into the enclosure and i think back to that i'm like man that was so terrible i was like poor, cooking that poor tarantula but i mean that was that, that was how how they were kept that's what i was told and this is it the thing is we didn't know no different back then you know, even yeah. even with me. So I, I did a college course uh, and in their reptile room, they had sponges in the, the water dishes with the tarantulas because that was the done thing. You know, it was, yeah, you put a sponge in or a cotton wool ball, put, put that in. That's how you do it because they'll drown other ones. So, so we didn't yeah. even know like back then. And that's, that's something I was learned, you know, I was taught, sorry, you know, on a course. Um, but yeah, now it's like, anybody mentions having a sponge you're like oh don't put a sponge in a water dish <laughs> yeah yeah i so, think yeah. i i when i originally got it it had a sponge and i kept that in the water dish and then it got really moldy and gross and i was like this is <laughs> this is disgusting i threw it out and went and got another one and then that one got moldy and gross and so i threw that out and just had a little bit of water in there and saw the tarantula drinking without it <laughs> and i was like well, i'm not gonna buy another one this is a scam <laughs> what's the point yeah yeah <laughs> i bet the tarantula was more like thanks for getting rid of that sponge richard i'll have a drink now <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh but one of the worst mistakes and i'm very lucky it was it didn't end tragically uh but i knew that it needed a hide and i wanted it to like, even back then i wanted it to look as natural as possible so like when you would go to the pet store pretty much the only hides they had were like those fake rock hides you know made out of plastic yeah. or half of a coconut you know that, that kind of thing and i really didn't like those at all and i was like i wanted to look a little more natural so i had bought these like over in the aquarium department they're like these like it was like slate or something like these 
flat rocks. Yeah. It's like black flat rocks. And so I took three of them and kind of made like two sides and then put one on top and kind of put substrate around it to hold it in place. But if you, you know, shook the table too hard, the thing would just collapse on itself. <laughs> but that was its hide and like thinking back that could have been like if that fed fallen on the tarantula that that could have been tragic like yeah, i don't that, know if it would have squished it but it, it could have it, it could have at least damaged a leg or something yeah so that I was it, lucky that didn't happen it wouldn't have been good <laughs> it wouldn't have had a yeah. good outcome i wouldn't say <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean it it seems like for a long time a lot of it was trial and error and uh, wait for somebody to publish a book or um you know I'm sure you, people would talk about stuff at, at expos and things, but it's nice now to have all of these different Facebook groups. And, and there's, there's, I mean, I don't even, I, I had counted how many tarantula Facebook groups there were like a year ago. Um, but I, so I can only imagine how many there are now. Yeah, <laughs> Probably there's there's absolutely of tons of them. Um, but, you know, the majority of them are, are fantastic, fantastic group of people, admin teams and stuff like that in, in them. Uh, I mean, quite yeah. a few of them. Because I kind of feel like, you know, there's certain ones you can get certain information from. So, like you said, Pokey Mountain is one of the other species-specific groups. That's a good group, especially if you want to learn more about, uh, you know, pokies in general. Um, personally, I don't I actually not have one. I have one pokey. I've got a uh, Peonator, but he's a mature male. <laughs> and he's been mm. mature now for about <laughs> six months, bless him. So, <laughs> can't oh, find wow. it. I couldn't find him a female. Nobody wanted him. <gasps> Alas, poor guy i know <laughs> <laughs> poor guy but yeah that's a good group um yeah there's so many there's no, like, your group your group is amazing like yeah you've got Thank so you. many members in there it's it's, it's just great I, and i love scrolling through and just you know feeding my uh addiction and looking at yeah. all of the the tarantulas people have got thinking oh yeah i need to add that one to the wish list <laughs> yeah I, and that's that's what i like so much is that there, there's so many different groups um and they they all are a little bit different you know like uh, the rules are a little bit different so it seems like there's a group for you know pretty much any type of personality or you know you may not kind of get along with you know how the people in this group are acting or what they're saying you know but there's there's always an, another option yeah uh, it, there's slight differences you know kind of based on people's personalities or worldviews but it seems that the core information in all these groups are essentially the same so you know if, You've got plenty of options to find a group you're comfortable in and still get you know some pretty good information. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. I th- yeah, I think that I think that's very cool. Um, and and I always kind of felt like there was a lot of hostility in the tarantula hobby until I started looking into ball python hobby and milk snake hobby and geckos. It's like, you know, there is some controversy, controversial subjects, but we're. I don't think we go as hard as some of those other places. Do. No, I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention much, but yeah, um, I, that's kind of what I say. Like, where you know, join a join a royal python group, and then you'll know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> not, I mean, not that the people opinionated. obviously in that group set out to upset anybody, but you know, these right. I suppose it's their passion for the animal mm-hmm. just comes through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, you know, and, don't know where else to put that really. <laughs> yeah. And and sometimes I get overwhelmed just in my own Facebook group because there are so many people in there. Like sometimes you can, it's something that I guess it's just a design flaw with Facebook. Something that drives me crazy is that you'll like open up the app and you'll see a post and then it refreshes. And then now you don't see that post anymore. And I'm like scrolling through all these posts trying to find that one. Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there, I mean, there's some tarantula groups out there. I'm like uh, the Ohio Tarantula Keepers group. It's just for I'm essentially just people in the state of Ohio, and there's you know like 400 people in there. It's a lot, a lot closer community. You know, it's they're they're mainly talking about expos and um, you know breeding loans and and you know things that are very specific to that area. Um, yeah. As far as like you know what's going on and what's available, but you know it it's nice kind of being part of those smaller groups as well, getting to know people on a more personal basis and interacting with them. Yeah. You're not so, yeah, it, it's, it's not as, um, I don't, I don't want to say crowded cause I don't feel like that's the right <laughs> description for a virtual space, but it, there's, you're just not inundated with so many posts, you know, you, you can really kind of dive deeper in those with the conversations and not have to worry about some strange person coming in and trolling the post. <laughs> <laughs> 
tell me about it. But so you've I mean, got, that in, uh, I was just going to say that in it, that in itself is nice because it's a you know a nice close community. And with this with the tarantula hobby, that's what I love the most is the community aspect of of it all, and just us all kind of coming together. And you know, I've made some great friends being in the hobby. Um, well, when I say being in the hobby, I've been in the hobby for years, but you know going transitioning into a tarantula youtuber and then with the facebook and everything and i'm kind of opening up that avenue in that world i've met so many people and yeah some people i haven't even met in person but yeah i'm really good friends with them it's crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> i can relate i didn't i i think i'm gonna have to have my wife listen to this podcast or maybe just talk to you i may give her your contact information I'll be like just talk to amy because she's worried last night actually we were talking um she was wanting me to go out to dinner with uh, her sister and her husband and then their another couple that they're friends with. Like the six of us go out to dinner once, you know, all this COVID stuff is over. I'm like, I have no interest in uh, meeting some other adult man. And like, you're trying to fix me up, make me friends with this person. She's like, oh, you know, he, he was in band in high school and he plays rock music and, and, you know, trying to like sell this person to me. I'm like, he could be a great guy, I but I have no interest in me. I was like, I got plenty of friends. And she's like, where? I'm like, online. <laughs> like, I got all these people I talk to every day, and she's like, those aren't those aren't real people. <laughs> I'm like, they really are real, <laughs> but you know, she she wants me to have like adult friends in town. Ad- I think. Adult friends. <laughs> well, I see what she's saying. Like, I do get I do get that from a certain aspect, and but. Literally, like, I've got uh, Angela Barnett. I'm such good friends with her. I've known her for five, six years, yet I've never met her. I've never actually met her in person. We both live in the UK, but she's at one end, I'm at the other. And it would probably take about Mm. 10 hours for us to meet up. And we just never have met. But we talk on the phone, we FaceTime, we message every day. And she's, you know, admin in in my group. She's admin for Fatal Friends 3 as well. She's not a YouTuber, um, but she's a hobbyist. Uh, She's a great Mm -hmm. TikTok. (laughs) Um, But I, (laughs) you know, I would say that she's a really close friend of mine. Yeah, I've never actually met yeah. her. It'll be really strange, I think. That we, we keep saying every year, we're like, we must meet up, we must meet up. I think the first time we meet up, it's going to be like, oh, my God. <laughs> Imagine meeting you. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. I, you I can... have similar situation with uh, Alex from Tarantula Haven. Like, we've never met. Um, but, you know, so we just sometimes are sending messages back and forth talking about life. Like, nothing really yeah. specific to tarantulas yeah. or YouTube, but... Um, it's somebody I, I think I would get along well with if he didn't live, I don't know, he's probably 15 hours away from me, but <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's nice, um, you know, meeting people in one place that I've, I feel like I've met a whole lot of people, uh, on a more personal basis and kind of develop friends with like friendships with online has been through the, uh, tarantula tubers Saturday night takeaway that uh, yes. you're heavily involved in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's. <laughs> People that, that don't know, that are listening to the podcast that have never seen that, can you kind of just maybe explain, you know, what the, the Saturday Night Takeaway is? And So the, the Tarantula Tube is Saturday Night Takeaway was a live stream that was created um, just over six months ago when we kind of all went first into lockdown. And it was, the you know, a style of the new going out, wasn't it, to all come up on screen. And Jaden from Mr. Grindler's Creatures, he'd come across uh, StreamYard where we could all kind of be on screen together. And it was very much, hey, why don't we do this? This would be amazing. Now, me, I was a special guest on the first one. I actually was a host. Uh, kind of did the first one with them. And then from then on, it was like, yeah, oh, you know, Amy needs to be a host too. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, so each Saturday, we were going live. Uh, we've changed it recently to every other Saturday, by the way. Um, but we're still doing it. <laughs> so each Saturday, we just went live and literally... We talked about tarantulas. We'd have special guests on, like yourself. Like you came on once, didn't you? We had Petco from the Dark Den on. Um, yeah, loads of people came on, other YouTubers. Um, and then we'd get people from out of the chat up on screen at the same time, play games with them. Uh, we do what's called Game Show Week, uh, where we mimic a game show and then give away loads of prizes and just literally was kind of pulling the community together, socialising with them, but not in person (laughs) sometimes having a drink (laughs) drinking a bit (laughs) of alcohol um and just having fun really it was just a way of kind of yeah because I think everybody was 
you know, stuff at home and, you know, some people were going for a hard time dealing with that, being isolated and it just, just took off. It really did. And it was amazing and become just something yeah. we didn't even think it was going to become. It was crazy. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. I mean, it, yeah. it's kind of like what it reminds me of is uh, like going to the bar after work or, you know, after a show or something yes. and, and hanging out with people and <laughs> talking shop, but also talking about life and, you know, what's going on in your personal worlds. And That's exactly uh, it, what it's, it's like. Exactly. Yeah. So we always try to do like the beginning of it being like talking about tarantulas, what might have happened in the last week. Did anybody get any new additions and, you know, any breeding projects that's going on, you know, be kind of factual and stuff, but then, yeah, then kind of get a little bit silly. I think the last one that we did, I dared, I dared a lot of them, a lot of the other hosts to do some really silly things, which was quite funny. Uh, Kieran <laughs> from Alternative Inverts, he had a dare to ring up his local Chinese and order a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just hilarious. But it was just a bit of fun. You know, everybody that was watching really enjoyed it. It made them laugh. And that's what it was all yeah. about. It's all about just kind of having fun, laughing and letting your hair down you know, without being able to go out and actually do it. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember exactly how I came across it. I'm sure I, I saw you all posted on Facebook or something. And I was more of a voyeur at first. I kind of like snuck in, was watching it. And it, it almost felt like, I mean, it felt very voyeuristic. Like you guys were hanging out, <laughs> talking, having, and I'm just watching, you know, everybody's just kind of watching you guys have a, have a little zoom chat <laughs> and uh, it yeah. was interesting. And then I saw you guys were like actually interacting with people in the live chat, bringing people up on screen, kind of talking. I was like, this is, this is very cool. This is a, uh, it's, it's a perfect thing to be doing during the pandemic. Like yeah. having that kind of social interaction with people That's that it, you, yeah. you share a lot of shared interest with, which is, is very cool. I saw, I was, just, I don't know what I was doing on Facebook, probably just wasting time. And I saw Mr. Grindler's had posted something. Uh, it, it, it just would seem like a very dramatic post about, Oh, it's like something was wrong. And all these people are leaving comments. And I was like, what in the world is going on? And I was like, oh, this that, must that have something to do with the live stream. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> so I jumped that, on to see what was going on. That was his dare. So he he got the dare to uh, post a status on his Facebook uh, profile saying, um, I think it was FFS. <laughs> I can't believe this has happened to me. And for everybody that commented on the post saying, like, what's up, what's happened, he just got a reply with PM me. And he just pretty much sat there for about an hour <laughs> just <laughs> replying to everybody. It was so funny. It really was so funny. I did feel a little bit bad afterwards, but but it was funny. They all consented to play the game, by the way. <laughs> I didn't force them into yeah. doing, any, doing anything. But, yeah, yeah, Jaden, Jaden's always up for a laugh. Uh, he had. A, I have a message for him from you. Uh, he said to make sure I tell you that uh, he loves you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have a message from him. I haven't responded to. He may be a little concerned. He offended me. <laughs> I think yeah. he, he made a uh, a bald joke at my expense. <laughs> uh oh, is is that to do with his green hair? He's just recently dyed yeah. it. It's an amazing, amazing neon green uh, that glows under yeah. black light as well. Crazy. No way. Fantastic. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah. He sent me a picture of it and was like, you should get your hair like this if you had any hair. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I was at work, so I, I, I should respond so he knows I'm not offended. But, yeah, he, he's, a, he's a regular guest um, on the trend. Or is he a host? He's a host. So, yeah, he's a host. So the you host, got- the host uh, myself, Kieran from Alternative Inverts, uh, Jaden from Mr. Grindler's Creatures, Craig from Couch Locked Arachnophobia and Danny Damon from Keeper Cards. So uh, Francis from the Invert Kingdom UK, he was a host, but unfortunately due to personal reasons, he had to leave. He just couldn't commit to it every Saturday. Um, and Danny mm-hmm. stepped in uh, and become the fifth host. So yeah, it's, it's great. Danny, Francis uh... still comes up. Oh, sorry, Sidex. <laughs> he still comes up on, <laughs> on screen from time to time. So yeah, yeah. We, still, we still love him. <laughs> Danny, Danny's a good guy. I, uh, I've enjoyed getting to know him over the past few months. Uh, he's, he does the keeper cards. He's been on the podcast before. He has, uh, yeah. I, I enjoyed talking to him. Uh, he, he sent me a link. This is probably a few weeks ago. I, I don't, we were just talking, you know, just about random stuff, um, through messenger. And he was telling me about his band and, yeah. you know, I, I have, I mean, I, I was in bands play. I mean, I still play music. I'm not in a band anymore, but like, I mean, 
since middle school. That was that was what it was all about. And you know, where I grew up, that that music scene, there was a lot of metal bands, and it kind of. I, I was telling him, I think this is almost exactly what I said to him. But th- there's this joke I think by uh, Mitch Hedberg. Are you familiar with that stand-up comedian? Uh, not off the top of my head. No, oh, probably if I see his out. face. Yeah, he he's he's dead now. He he had died of a drug overdose, but. Very funny, okay. kind of dry one-liner type of comedian. <laughs> he had this joke that I could relate to. That was, uh, well, he said like, you know, growing up, I was in a uh, a metal band, and people either really liked us, uh, they really hated us, or they thought we were okay. <laughs> you know? So it's like that's kind of how I felt about uh, pretty much all metal bands. That uh, I, I didn't want to be rude and be like, yeah, that was that was fucking terrible. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I would, oh, it was okay. It was okay, um, and. So he he had he'd been talking about his band and was like you should listen to it and I never gave it a chance because I was like yeah, I'm sure they're they're going to be okay <laughs> and I'm I'm not that excited to listen I'm more of a punk rock kind of guy I mean I like all kinds of music but um he finally he sent me a link and was like check out this video I just uploaded I thought he had like actually uploaded a tarantula video uh, so I was going to watch it and give him a hard time about now being a tarantula YouTuber and it was his band it was like a music video for one of their songs and I was like holy hell they're fucking amazing yep prognosis yeah, blew me away yeah yeah so uh, fantastic I, I had to yeah i had to send him a message be like look man i apologize i have not been giving your band a uh you know a chance and i <laughs> i i missed out you are amazing that was amazing stuff yeah it's really good um I, he because we have a group chat for the for the trench tube saturday night takeaway and he put the link in the in there and i clicked on it and watched it and i was like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> Jesus, Danny, I didn't yeah. even realise that that this was, you know, you and your band, and yeah, because he talked about his band quite a bit, but uh, mm-hmm. I I hadn't even really kind of understood that actually it's really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, the music video was you know produced at such a level it was like this this could if MTV still played music videos I could Absolutely, totally see this on there yeah definitely <laughs> it was it was amazing very tight well recorded and I, I was impressed you know I was very impressed and so I, I had to apologize <laughs> <laughs> and 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 let it, and now I'm saying publicly like definitely check out prognosis uh I'll, I'll actually I'll leave a link in the description on the YouTube channel you so heard it check first it here people <laughs> <laughs> so uh is 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 any of the people from the Tarantula Tubers Saturday Night Takeaway, which is not on any specific channel, right? Like you guys rotate who's hosting yeah. every week. Is that we rotate it? Yeah. So how, so how do people find out where it is? Like, what's so the we best have, way? We do have a Facebook group for it. So uh, there's a yeah Facebook group and a page, but we mainly use the group. So Tarantula Tubers Saturday Night Takeaway. If you join that group, then that's when you get a heads up of where it is. But we like to always set the stream up at least a day or two before uh, we actually do it. So then we share that about everywhere. So all five of us will share it. So you can't miss it really um, because it's kind of plastered over Instagram and Facebook and everybody's YouTube uh, community tabs and but the, the Facebook group is kind of the one place to be where you're definitely guaranteed to find out what's kind of upcoming. So the next one, which I do believe is the 16th of uh, January, that's on Kieran's channel, Alternative Inverts, and it's game show week. And then we've got oh, given out prizes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I enjoy Alternative Inverts. Kieran, Kier- say his name again. I always mispronounce it. Kieran. Kieran. Yep. <laughs> I, I guess it's just in this area, it's Kyrian. <laughs> so that's why I keep saying, I'm like, that's not it. It's not Kyrian. Kyrian. <laughs> and uh, Rachel, right? Is she, is she, uh, she been coming on the live streams much lately? Uh, she hasn't much lately because I think she's just been like really busy with working and stuff, but she does. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's great when she, she does come on. And when she does, she'll come into Kyrian's videos. She's even done some videos on her own that are on his channel as well, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, they yeah. make such a great team. Like they bounce off of each other. It's they're so funny. Um, yeah. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and didn't uh, so we... think Kieran uh, um, set a challenge with you last night? <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to hold him to that. <laughs> I was just kidding, and it kind of spun out of control. Because <laughs> you do realise he is a tattooist, so he he could yeah. probably tattoo if he if he lost against you. Then I'm sure he'd just go straight ahead and tattoo his. <laughs> Uh, your logo on him without a problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, 
and we were talking about the uh, the new Fatal Fangs three that's uh, that's launching here in a little bit, and yeah. I guess that was that was that was on we were on your channel. You were premiering a video. Um, it, it was essentially like just an, a, a, it was like the rules for Fatal Fang three. Yeah. Like, so we, so how it would was, you describe that video? So it was I I described it as the launch. So it was like the official kind of it's happening. We are doing a Fatal Fangs three, um, and I wanted to introduce the judges because there's three judges that will be judging everybody's feeding clips, um, and I wanted to introduce them. So obviously. You are one of the judges, Richard, which is fantastic. <laughs> I think most of the contestants or uh, people that are hoping to be contestants are relieved that you're a judge and not actually taking part, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so yeah, for people so that don't know what, uh, for what I mean, th there are people that are just unaware, even though it's like the third season. I don't know if we call it, you would call it a season, but the third round or comp, I don't know. Uh, but what what can you explain what Fatal Fangs is for people yeah, that sure. maybe listening that aren't aware? So Fatal Fangs uh, is a tournament that was created by Sam Carver from Bug Realms. Uh, he set it up. It was his idea, his you know baby, if you like, and he set it up and did Fatal Fangs One. Uh, with Fatal Fangs One had a few flaws in it uh, with the way that the judging was done on the feeding clips, and then obviously went on to do Fatal Fangs Two by changing it up a bit. But for Fatal Fangs Three, he didn't want to host it on his channel um, because for him, Fatal Fangs was never going to be something he was going to keep. He always want he always had it in the back of his mind he would pass it on to another YouTuber, so pass it mm -hmm. on to me. But essentially, it's a tournament where all of the Tarantula YouTubers go head to head with each other. Uh, for who's got the, the best feeding clip. Um, so we say, may the best fans win. <laughs> and so each each round um, is then judged by a judging panel, so three judges. Um, so say, for instance, if I was... If, so actually, let's take last year. Last year, So Fatal Fangs 2, I went up against Mark's Tarantulas. And so my clip went head-to-head -head against Mark's Tarantulas. The three judges obviously then chose which one they thought was the best clip, and they chose Mark. And he knocked me out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's fine. I was expecting that to happen anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, that's how it was. And then obviously Mark then progressed into round two. And then so on and so on. And uh, you go right up until you kind of dwindle everybody down and all the contestants. And then you end up with just two people in the final. And then one person becomes the champion. And the champion of last year's The Fatal Friends 2 was Kelly from Critters and Creations. And she stormed the tournament. I mean, her clips were absolutely <laughs> fantastic. And the way that she themed them to be Mortal Kombat style, that was just genius. It was absolutely brilliant. Uh, right from the beginning, from like round one, I picked her to win because I was just like, I think she's got, say, let's say the X factor <laughs> of, yeah. the, of Fatal Fangs. But it's just, yeah, it was amazing. So it's just, it's a laugh. It's, it's a bit of fun. Uh, it's to entertain us, to entertain our subscribers, the viewers. Um, yeah, just, it, it's fantastic. It really is. It pulls the community back together as well um, in that everybody's in the Facebook groups and we're all talking. And there's a, a Facebook group for the fans as well. So we've got one for just contestants and one for fans. So people that... You could be a YouTuber, but you don't want to take part. Or you could just be a subscriber and you watch it and you're entertained by it. So that group is for them. Uh, we keep both groups running and up to date with the latest information. So, yeah. It's so, quick question. Do, do you, to, to enter the competition, to be a contestant, do you have to have a YouTube channel? Or can you just keep tarantulas and enjoy recording feeding clips? Uh, is there like a barrier for entry? Do you have to have like 100 subscribers on your channel or anything like that? Well, you, you have to be a tarantula YouTuber or an invert YouTuber, but have tarantula related content on your channel because the tournament was created for YouTubers uh, to go head to head with each other and battle it out. Um, so, yeah, you've got to be a YouTuber first and foremost. You don't have to have a limited amount or a, a maximum amount of subscribers. There's nothing to do with mm. that. It's just as long as you have tarantula related content on your channel, that's all you need to enter uh yeah. so it's kind of a way of promoting the tarantula youtube community getting other channels out there and absolutely yeah making people aware of it because yeah, that's, that's that's very smart and for me that's the biggest thing that i want to do i want to make sure that we you know push everybody's channel so everybody that enters you know get them out there get them seen because there are some fantastic channels out there that just don't get the recognition that they actually deserve um 
and by doing fatal fangs i mean i've i've had a lot of people say even with fatal fangs too you know i didn't even know that channel existed and i love it i now love that channel you know they've subscribed and they're absolutely you know 100 percent supporting them and and that's what we want that's my biggest aim is to make sure that if if you're a youtuber you've got tarantula related content then you know enter the competition let's get your name out there let's get your channel out there and promote you yeah yeah I mean, it's, it's hard <laughs> uh i mean not not to just talk about youtube in the podcast but it is getting your your, your channel out there and videos in front of eyes is, is very difficult especially when you're first starting out and it seems like just it's kind of like the the frustrating part with not just youtube's algorithm like with pretty much any social media algorithm that there's stuff that's really good you know or popular i think would be a better way of putting it that gets you know uh it, it meets the requirements of the algorithm to keep getting like pushed in front of other people recommended yeah. a lot and then there's like the other end of the spectrum there's stuff that's really just terrible and bad you know like people doing really dumb things with tarantulas using them in pranks and stuff like that like when i go on youtube and i search tarantula videos it's it's usually like you know uh really popular videos like uh exotic slayer dark den you know people like that or it's people i've never heard of doing horrible things with tarantulas yeah. you know like put them in their mouth or you know putting a tarantula in their girlfriend's bed or something like that it's like you know that so it all all the the good content that maybe isn't really exciting uh, as putting a tarantula in somebody's bed and scaring the hell out of them <laughs> or you know it, it just kind of like gets lost in the ether and, it, and it's, it it's difficult to come across even yeah. if you're searching for it sometimes it's hard to find yeah it does so i think that it, it's it's really cool to kind of yeah fatal fangs gives like that, that platform to actually promote those channels that that are worth promoting you know the good channels the the ones that are kind of maybe just setting out uh, and will sh you know are struggling to get within that algorithm and push their channel out there um but fatal fangs gives the opportunity to actually do that because you know all of the subscribers hopefully from everybody's channel who's competing will be there to see the the tournament take place and so therefore mm -hmm. we'll see everybody that is you know uh, a part of the the tournament itself so yeah it's just it's so exciting yeah. <laughs> i can't wait <laughs> i say i can't I wait know, but I've... it's going to be a lot of work for me but i'm, I'm willing to yeah. take it on I'm willing <laughs> to take it on <laughs> i mean i found out a, a, a lot i found a lot of channels through uh fatal fangs or tarantula tuber saturday night uh takeaway like just channels i didn't know existed or were putting out maybe i, I had seen their logo or heard about it but i hadn't actually watched them until Kind of came across them on uh on one of those platforms so it's 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 really a good way of you know getting everybody's name out there i think that's that's some awesome stuff that you guys are doing oh, uh, yeah it's well that's that's what you know i mean that's me i just you know I'm, I'm happy to help where i can and i will always kind of help to promote people if i can i'm not a huge channel not by any means uh i mean i'm only you know tiny in the world of, of youtube if you like but yeah, if I can help, then I will. And I'm hoping that I can massively help by hosting Fatal Fangs in, you know, kind of boosting everybody. Because it's not about, I'm oh, sorry, mm -hmm. just hit my mic. <laughs> it's not about <laughs> me. It's it's about everybody else, in my opinion. That's yeah. How I see it anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and there's the tarantula hobby. Like, the, the it's, it's a very small community in comparison to, you know, other hobbies or even other, like, exotic pets. Um, yeah. Yeah, when you're getting into snakes and geckos and stuff there's you know 10 times the amount of people that are kind of into that stuff but it, within the small community there's also even like smaller little kind of clicks or niches you know like there's uh, people that are into tarantulas that make youtube videos there are people that are breeding there are people that are making enclosures or you know what i mean there, it, there's all these little subsections and like within the community so it's it's kind of cool to to be in a spot where you can try and and introduce or get people working together um if that makes sense <laughs> you know like there are a lot of people that breed tarantulas that just that don't watch youtube at all like they just don't find any enjoyment out of watching youtube so they don't know a lot of these channels exist you know so it's it's what's one of the things i like the most about you know like my facebook group or something is is to be able to kind of try and bring these communities together yeah. and one thing I'm i'm hoping at some point in the future is to set up some way where we're all kind of working together to you know because it's the goal of uh the people that are making enclosures is to you know make like tarantula cribs we'll just use them as an example 
they are making very high end uh, enclosures specifically for like tarantulas or inverts. You know, what I mean, whether they're isopods or centipedes or whatever, they're they're great enclosures. But they're a small business that's starting out, so it's it's difficult getting the word out about that you have this available. So I think it, it's cool to be able to like take people that are, are doing something like that and take somebody like uh, like I I think I introduced them to Alex at Tarantula Haven. I was like, hey, this is a this is a really good YouTuber. He's got a you know he's got a a loyal audience like. You guys should work together. You know, it's it would be benefit both of you, and they've kind of created a really good relationship through there. Um, so, I, just having that ability to kind of introduce people to each other and it it, it elevates everybody. That's that it. Yeah. You know? It's just the yeah. co- it's making that connection, isn't it, from one one yeah. to the other? Because um, like over here we have Mantis Den that are making enclosures uh, for uh, you, you know all manner of terrestrial uh, arboreal. I don't actually I don't know if they're doing fossorial but I know they're doing terrestrial and arboreal and obviously mantis enclosures and they sent them out to uh, so Jaden had one uh, Mr Grindley's creatures and then you know he did a video on it now if that wasn't for Jaden doing that video and mantis then sending that enclosure to Jaden I wouldn't have seen I wouldn't have even known about them and that oh, they're mm-hmm. fantastic the enclosures look great they really do yeah and one of my goals right now is is to kind of get that cross promoting going and because i know these businesses like there's some tarantula dealers and stuff here in the u.s that they're paying google hundreds of dollars a month maybe thousands of dollars a month wow. uh, for ad placement uh they're paying facebook for ads you know i mean there's they've got a, an advertising budget of hundreds or thousands of dollars that they're spending with facebook instagram uh, google i mean wherever youtube running ads and it's like you could have an even more direct audience that would be more interested in buying your stuff if you ran ads on youtubers channels you know even if they only have a thousand subscribers you know they're still getting hundreds of views as are people that are guaranteed to want to buy your product and trying to convince uh, businesses to support uh, channels and convince channels to support businesses is it's proving to be kind of difficult which which is madness because you'd think it'd be really easy (laughs) Yeah, because it would make would think, perfect but, sense, doesn't it, to target your you know your target audience, be those people that are going to buy your product. They are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I know like, from my side uh, that making videos is time consuming, and, oh, God, you know, yeah. and you have to take the time to record it and to edit it and re-record. You know, and and it's just there's a lot of work going into it. Even just something as simple as designing a thumbnail. Like yeah. I've spent hours on one thumbnail before. You know, it's. You, you put a lot of energy into it and you, you know, you're not really making much money from, you know, YouTube, if any at all. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it, it it's going to help these people because you're spending that much time on it. Just having a little bit of financial compensation for it, get like frees up the ability to, to work harder and, and to elevate your content, make it better, make it more interesting, learn yeah. and progress. And it, but the issue that I'm running into and in, in like trying to connect these people is that you've got channels that essentially they're like, I don't, I don't really want to sell out or whatever. I don't, I don't want to run an ad in my video. And then you've got the people that have the businesses that are like, I don't, it's not a traditional form of advertising that they're comfortable with. Maybe, you know, it's, it, you see Squarespace and there's all kinds of, you know, Spotify and all these like big businesses that are making millions of dollars by advertising through YouTube. Uh, but convincing a smaller business with a very limited budget, you know, that, that this is actually probably going to do you a lot better than running an ad on Google. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's not absolutely. Easy. Yeah, I, I but, totally agree. Because, like I said, just when Mantis then just sending that enclosure to, to Jaden and then him doing a video of him actually, he, you know, building it and then rehousing, uh, I think it was, he put his GBB in there. Um, yeah, that mm-hmm. just, yeah, it was fantastic way of advertising mantis then because it was somebody that was actually using it and showing people that were interested in you know that kind of thing it yeah made perfect sense made perfect sense yeah i mean it, it, it helps out it, it helps out both sides really it is, does yeah, kind of yeah, my, yeah my take on it you know and it's uh i i understand why people are hesitant and nobody likes seeing ads or anything like that but it, it keeps that money in the community you know i think that's that's what i uh, my my biggest goal is to you know instead of paying this you know hugely (laughs) success you know instead of giving 
YouTube and Google more money that they don't really need, you know, uh, keep it in the hobby and support somebody that's doing something that's, that's elevating the hobby and getting the word out to more people, you know, and that it feels like it would, it's, it would just be a lot more effective. And yeah, hundred you know, percent. and, and I've, I've had people that have approached me and are wanting to run an ad and I'm like, how about instead of, you know, take that money you just offered me and split it in half and go with two smaller channels because they need help too, you know, like, uh, so I mean, I try sending, um, you know, some of those people to, to other channels and, and getting them to, you know, even if it's not like you're paying them to run an ad, just sending them some enclosures or some tarantulas or, you know, whatever it is, get, you know, it helps them out and gets a name out about your business and share the love, you know, <laughs> that's not. Share the love. Uh, yeah. That's what we like. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so the Fatal Fangs, the Fatal Fangs, we, we were, uh, we kind of got off track there. So that, what, I was talking to Kirian from Alternative Inverts in your little premiere, and yeah. we were talking about, you know, the, the feeding clips and stuff like that, and I jokingly had challenged him to uh, do a, a like a head-to-head, head 1v1 with me, Yeah. and the person that loses has to get the winner's logo tattooed on them somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and and i was like i knew he was a tattoo artist so i was just kind of like joking like yeah you get, and, and he was like i'm down <laughs> i was like oh no what if i lose <laughs> but his logo uh, is fantastic almost you know he yeah he's, he he tattooed his own logo on himself recently um and yeah his <laughs> logo is great and i think his logo would suit you <laughs> yeah tattooed on you well, I- I have this fear now that that's like going to actually become a thing. <laughs> we, we were talking it's, it's about it and I and said, develop. I said, we'll end up doing it and challenging everybody will be challenging, challenging each other. Then there'll be no need for our YouTuber sticker boards because we, we have them all over <laughs> us and be promoting that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's exciting to, to check out this fatal things. Uh, I really enjoy I remember the first one, it came out um, and I was watching it. Uh, it was it was very interesting. It was cool. It was just like a, a feeding video, but from everybody has their own style, you know, yeah. their own style of, of recording feeding clips. So it was very interesting in that aspect. And I like what you all did with season two, kind of turned it more into, uh, it, it looked, like you kind of said, Mortal Kombat, like more of a, like a fighting game kind of style. Yeah, it was, was great. It was and Sam really did awesome with that because he, even with the uh, fighting poses where so on the screen where somebody, you know, I don't know whether it's say me and Mark again, going up against each other. And there was little me with my fighting pose like this and not that people can see because obviously it's a podcast, but hang on. <laughs> so I, I got my fists up and stuff and was like, yeah, and Mark <laughs> facing the other way. And it was just great. And we had a lot of banter, me and Mark did over it before we actually uh, mm-hmm. went up against each other head to head. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, such, it's such a good laugh at the same time. It really is. And it brought everybody yeah. together. There wasn't one bit of, you know, somebody not being happy or, you know, it, it wasn't taken serious. It was just entertainment, pure entertainment. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so definitely there, think there's people a, should watch it. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. We'll definitely have to uh, promote that. I mean, it seemed like, um, the, what, what, do you call, what do you call it? Just Fatal Fangs 2? Um, it seemed to, to be pretty popular. I saw a lot of people were watching it and getting involved. Yeah, Fatal Fangs 2, and then obviously this is Fatal Fangs 3 that I'm hosting. Uh, whether there'll be a fourth, we'll have to watch this space, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So you're trying to you're trying to get 64 contestants, correct? 64 that, contestants, yeah. It's, it's kind I'm of like bracket style. For, because it's either 64 or 32. So I can't, I can't half it anymore. It's got to, because a tournament doesn't work otherwise, unless you have, uh, say, like 16, 32, 64, you've got to double it each time. And hopefully, I'd love to get 64 YouTubers involved. It'd be absolutely amazing um, because it'd just make it so much bigger and so much better. And uh, yeah, it'd just be great. Just be fantastic. So yeah, if, if you once again, if 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 you're listening, people, and you are a, a tarantula YouTuber or an invert YouTuber or an exotic pet YouTuber, but you have tarantula related content on your channel, then go over and check out. I did a video yesterday on it, and there's also the Facebook group, Fatal Fangs Three Contestants Group. I think it's called. Go over and join it because it it is it's it's so much fun. It's so much fun, 
and seeing everybody's kind of feeding clips and the way that they create them as a YouTuber, you know, as a content creator, you know, what it is that they do, their style, you know, like Kelly making hers be Mortal Kombat style. That was, like I said, genius, absolutely genius. And yeah, it's just, it's exciting. It's exciting to see. I love feeding videos and feeding clips and to actually see it the way that they are produced for Fatal Fangs. Yeah, it's a cut above the rest. It really is. People put a lot of effort, a lot of effort into it. I would agree. And and that you kind of hit on something that it was I, something I, I like talking about. Um, there, you said it was very entertaining. And yes. it seems like there's when it comes to YouTube channels regarding tarantulas, there's video, there, there's channels that are uh, strictly educational. I guess we could say, you know, they're very uh, to the like it, the, how to take care of this tarantula, or you know, just kind of. I, I like bird spider ch he, he goes out to you know he goes out in nature and finds these tarantulas in the wild and talks about them gives you information about them then there's videos that are just you know purely entertainment uh whether they're yeah. feeding videos or you know st- where do you feel like your channel kind of fits in on that spectrum um so i don't do <clears throat> excuse me i don't do uh care videos um i I will put up information if I'm, say, rehousing a tarantula. I'll put up information on the screen about that tarantula and the facts that we know about it. But I don't do care videos as such. The only reason why I don't do that is because I believe that, you know, we all kind of have our ways of keeping all of our pets. And the way that someone might do it might not work for somebody else. And I don't want to make somebody do it my way and then it go wrong for them. So I have an element of worry, which is why I don't do care videos. So I would kind of say that I fit in entertainment wise. I try and make my videos entertaining. I love to put good music over them. You know, I'm very uh, picky with making, say, a, a takedown or my feeding videos, you know, go with the music, uh, uh, the beat of the music and stuff like that. So that's something that I really enjoy doing when I'm putting it together. But I think it's just literally I show my journey, if you like. So if I get a new tarantula, I'll do a video. If I'm rehousing, I do a video. If I'm breeding, I do a video <laughs> or I go live and do it <laughs> and hope that they do pair successfully, which they didn't last week. <laughs> Bracky Pal Mahamori. They did the second time round, though. Thank God. Um, but yeah, right, I just say I'm kind of, I don't know. I don't know really <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's it's more like a kind of vlog style yeah i'd say so yeah yeah, yeah that'd be the best way to documenting, say it. <laughs> documenting your journey uh yeah i enjoy those there seems to be a you know when i've tried I, I don't really do too much vlog style but i've tried to like walk that line between entertainment and education and it, it kind of falls in that that old adage like uh with I'm trying to think of a way of saying this, not it, explicit, <laughs> but uh, my dad, I just, my dad used to say, if you uh, try to ride the fence, you're going to end up splitting your balls. And, and <laughs> okay, yeah. Sometimes it kind of feels like, you know, <laughs> that's such a good I, way I, to put it though. <laughs> you don't yeah. see your dad. <laughs> <laughs> People that are, uh, you know, looking for entertainment, you know, like they're looking, they're watching exotic slayer or dark den or like, oh, your videos are too dry and educational. People that are, you know, are more into the educational stuff are like, eh, it's too, oh, what did somebody say? Uh, it's it's overproduced or he- too heavily edited or, uh, you know, so it's it's like, I'm, you're not going to please everybody. <laughs> like, oh, no, uh, you, you, you'll never please, you'll never please everybody. I mean, me, I think, I, when I first thought, let me give this YouTuber guy, I mean, I've been keeping tarantulas for a number of years beforehand and I was always kind of filming them, taking photos and stuff and, then going to the uh the the invert shows here in the UK and then there's a lot of YouTubers that were there and I was like I wonder whether I could actually do this and I did have a channel and I was uploading really random things onto it and I thought let me just change the name and see what I can do and at first I was just putting videos on where it just literally was just a a minute video of a tarantula feeding Uh, and then I I got into the uh, YouTube community, the Tarantula YouTuber community through Facebook, and was like, actually, this is amazing. I, this, why have I never looked at this before? And then from there, it just kind of grew. And I have to thank uh, Tarantula YouTuber Saturday Night Takeaway just because they gave me such a boost in confidence. Um, before I was doing that, 
yes, I was, you know, showing myself off on my videos and talking and stuff, but I wasn't as confident as I am today. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have them to thank for that. Just because, you know, going live, it's quite nerve-wracking going live. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, and I had is. never done it before until I started doing it with them. And now you now look at me and now I can go, I go live on my own. And it's just, yeah, it's just growth. There's a lot of growth that's happened over the last kind of year or so, especially with yeah. my channel anyway. I've hit a few milestones, which is fantastic. So I never thought I would ever, ever reach the subscriber amount that I have. Um, or for for my channel yeah. to be accepted into the YouTube partners, partnership program, I never accept. I never, never did I ever think <laughs> that would happen. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. So you you are you just crossed like what thirteen hundred? Yes, yeah, so thirteen. Yeah. Uh, I think one thousand three hundred fifty. I think I just crossed. Yeah, which that's crazy. I remember hitting uh, fifty. I'm being, but each time I've just been just as excited, you know. Fit with when I when I hit fifty, I was just as excited as I was when I hit a thousand. It's just I'm every every subscriber means a, a huge amount to me. The support that I get from yeah. everybody is just incredible. It really is. It's heartwarming. Yeah, it's. it's <laughs> <laughs> it is a. There's a, a cool feeling that people enjoy the content that you put out and want to keep watching it. You know, yeah it's, it, it makes it kind of it makes it worthwhile uh, I, I know it's a it's a lot of work now would, do you think that uh you know maybe there's a little bit of uh narcissism to your personality uh, that kind of it's something somebody asked me i'm not calling you a narcissist don't get me wrong <laughs> okay, was that, whoa, was like, hang on richard <laughs> <laughs> it takes a certain type of person to kind of like have that thought that people want to know my opinion on this it's it's takes some courage you know some uh to to kind of like turn the camera onto yourself and and be talking about this stuff and then posting it out there in the public um and it, it's something that you know i struggle with like right now like you know i don't know if you call it imposter syndrome or whatever it is i've heard people a lot of people talk about it but it's um like do people really want to hear this do they really want to see this am i really saying something that's important like why am I doing this? Why put all this work into making these videos? And you know, it it's not something everybody can do or everybody wants to do. So it it, it doesn't matter. I don't think it doesn't matter what kind of content you're creating. If you're turning that that camera onto yourself and putting something out there publicly, you know, there, there's something different in your personality than you know, oh, maybe a normal person. Does that make sense? Did I just yeah. offend you? No, 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 <laughs> no. I completely understand where you're coming from. So uh, back last year, I did a series on my channel called Pet Rock Asks. And it was where I took a YouTuber for each episode and I asked them questions. Um, it was all done through video clips and then I edited them all together. And when I was doing that, I had a lot of comments from people saying that I should be a presenter. And I'd never thought that that was something that, I would ever kind of think of doing like presenting something and then when I did yeah. the Fatal Fangs launch video uh, a lot of like some of my friends and family have watched it back and they've gone you, you know you, you're such a natural presenter just the way that I come across and the way that I've done it and so I get what you're saying yeah you've just got to kind of maybe have that in your personality that drive to present and that natural kind of uh, I don't know I don't know what the word would be but <laughs> yeah personality your character to come across yeah but yeah, yeah it's it's still scary I mean, yeah. though it's still dead scary i'm the same like any every video i make i critique it i'm my worst critique honestly when i think oh, oh, oh i don't think that's right i think everybody's gonna hate it and um i always send my videos to somebody beforehand to say have a look at that tell me what you think before i put it on my <laughs> channel <laughs> Yeah, I don't even usually have that much courage. I'm like, all right, it's done. I'm just, I'm just gonna pull the bandaid off, just throw it out there, <laughs> move on to the next one, <laughs> and not look. But yeah, not I it's out there. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, and it's, it's one of those. It's weird. It's a weird thing to. I work really hard, like filming, editing, uh, you know, getting it all together, watching it. And like, yes, I am happy with this video. This is like the best video I've made so far. And then as soon as I upload it and make it public and like watch it that first time like through youtube just to see because it compresses the video oh, and, and it can change a lot of different like the color and the lighting and stuff like that can change slightly and so i, I re-watch it to make sure that 
um everything kind of looked all right and and then it's like it, it switches and it goes from this is like the best video that i've made so far to this like huge list of critiques and notes that i'm like all right there's too much lighting in this scene and yeah. you know, we, the audio was off here and, and like I, and then I, i'm like well this video sucks so we'll, we'll try again next week yeah <laughs> but it's so true we just it, they say it's like a, a decorator a decorator will always be able to spot their mistakes but nobody else will be able to spot it so yeah <laughs> that's that's not entirely true well, sometimes well, my comments well, i suppose are no with... little, little tiny mistakes i suppose unless you've got some you know ocd <laughs> yeah you'd be able to spot it but, <laughs> but that will, i made that uh <laughs> i made one video i spent i i can't even, maybe 20 30 hours on it you know, this this like twelve minute video, and then I went to export it, and I you know sometimes when I don't know what software you use, but I, I'm using Premiere Pro, and you like I use the little trackball on my mouse to kind of like scroll down through all the options. Yeah. And sometimes if the mouse hovers over um, like a field of selection, instead of scrolling down, it scrolls through all those options. <laughs> and yeah. Apparently, I was doing that and switched my frame rate from like you know normally i think it's like a no. 30 frames per second i switched it to like 15 frames per second oh, no. and then exported it uploaded it and was watching it was like this doesn't look bright <laughs> and then i was like maybe it's just my connection or it's because it's so recently uploaded it's still processing um and then a few hours later i checked the comments and people are like what the hell is up with this video <laughs> I'm like, watch i'm like yeah i screwed that up <laughs> But it, it happens. was all kind of like jerky. I did a video uh, recently on my Balfouri communal. Um, I don't get to see mine that often because the uh, enclosure that they have, obviously it's a, it's a tank, uh, but I kind of built the background and the sides. So I don't get that luxury of seeing them on the side of the glass because I've built up the sides, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's, they don't come out very often, but they come out this one evening and I managed to get some great footage. I spent about you know, six, seven hours putting all this footage together, you know, changing the transitions, everything, making it great, putting music over it. Yeah. And then uh, my editing software decided that I didn't have footage, <laughs> although it was there, but they decided to say, no, you don't have footage. So you're not having this video at all. And I just had a bunch of question oh, no. marks across the screen. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> like all that time and i will do it again but you kind of get a little bit demotivated don't you and yeah, yeah. so I, I was so happy with it and then yeah and i'm like damn i've got to do that all again please somebody help me <laughs> but it's one of those things it's the joys of being a youtuber you just got to keep pushing and you get there in the end um so, so you you mentioned uh you just did some breeding uh what would you say was uh, the brachypelmi brachypelmi <laughs> brachypelma uh was a homori was that what you yes. were breeding yes yeah yeah so i'm actually about ready to i'm, I'm considering i've got a female and a male that are, re are ready to breed like um it's a the tilicotl tilicotl i always mispronounce that Vogans, the mexican red rump tarantula yep now i've i've attempted breeding a few times in the past uh trim to uh Avicularia, Avicularia. Um, actually, a twice I did that. And oh, what was the other? Omothymus vilicepes. Those are my first two species that I tried breeding and I did not have success. And uh, so I, I'm about ready to try this third time. I'm hoping for success. S can you give me some tips, like, uh, you know, on breeding, how you go about it? Um, you know, help a guy um, out. <laughs> so for me, um, I'm not by any means experienced in, in breeding you know I'm maybe like yourself I've, tr I've tried it and uh, I've got I've had success with my M. Balfouri which is fantastic um, but with my Harmori the first thing that I did was made sure that his enclosure was next to her enclosure just so that when you know if they sensed each other would they communicate and they did they massively did start communicating you know he was vibrating he created a sperm web when she was tapping back to him the whole time it was fantastic to to witness um and then when i put him in there for the first time the yeah, it was so smooth they just literally went straight for it paired it was fantastic that was back in october and then i left it for some time and then put his enclosure back to hers let them communicate again, which they did, uh, and then tried to pair in them again. But I think 
before you even consider purring, I think the first thing that you need to do is is look into where that tarantula is from and see whether you need to create some kind of conditioning. You know, in the in their natural habitat, what is their breeding season? When do they do it naturally in the wild? Uh, is it rainy? Do you need to make sure you're soaking the enclosure? Is it warm? And do you need to up your temperatures? So they call that conditioning. So conditioning the female. And I don't think you have to do that with every species but some species definitely benefit from being conditioned um, and you're more likely to be successful in the female dropping an egg sac so though with the uh, m balfouri for instance the one thing that i did with her which promoted and triggered her to drop an egg sac was i soaked one side of her enclosure now they were and you know dry species they're from where they're from so Cotra island it's arid there they have such little rainfall but when they do have the rainfall that's kind of likely when the females will drop their egg sacs. So by okay. initiating, creating that kind of environment in her enclosure made her think, oh, <laughs> it's raining. I better drop an egg sac. <laughs> 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 so just little things like that. And I think as well, like, you know, make sure that you've witnessed your, if you can, because you don't always obviously witness it, but witness your, your male making a sperm web, make sure that he's ready from that aspect. Um, Make sure your female isn't uh, underweight uh, or overweight. You wouldn't want her to be overweight either. So she's comfortably fed so that she's not going to just look at the man and think, oh, food. <laughs> Hopefully, if you're, you know, making sure that you've put their enclosures next to each other, kind of introducing them that way. Some people actually put the male's enclosure inside the female's enclosure. Uh, I've seen yeah. uh, Kieran, I think, from Alternative Inverts has done that because um, he's had, a, you know, a lot of success recently uh, or last year uh, with his breeding projects uh, it's been, been fantastic I've had some some of the slings from him the Himalayana uh, I've got some of those and yeah uh, but it, I think it's all a bit of kind of again listening to other people's experiences researching having a look and see what you can find there's a lot of information out there for on breeding um, not on every species but I would say there is on the, the tea bagans. I'd say you would probably find <laughs> something on that yeah. species. Yeah. Definitely. And I've, one of the reasons I haven't done a lot of breeding is because I, one, I, I don't want to sell tarantulas. You know, that's not an aspect of the hobby I've had any interest in. And I didn't know anybody that would at, initially that would uh, be willing to buy them wholesale. Since yeah. then I've kind of developed some of those relationships and, and have that ability but I, it's also, I don't, I didn't want to make, I didn't want to breed species that were already, uh, the market was well saturated with them. Oh, at yeah, least here yeah. in the U.S., you know, like um, uh, Canthoscuria geniculata or Avicularia vicularia. You know, there's, there's a lot of tarantulas. That there seems to be a whole bunch of people are constantly breeding. There's, you know, they're, they're selling for $10, $15 a sling. It's like, I, I don't need to, to put more out there, you know. <laughs> so I wanted to just breed species that are, uh, a little more uncommon, you know, maybe not rare, but uh, that there is a need for. And I just I hadn't had that luck, you know, of having a male and a female that were mature at the same time. And as the years have gone by, I've realized that, you know, I, I'm, there's a part of the, a, a, of the hobby that I'm really not involved in. And that's just like, I just need to, I don't know. I just wanted to like just go ahead and jump in. It's <laughs> just like, even though there's really no need, there's not a, a desire, I guess, uh, uh, for, for more Vogans on the market. because They seem pretty common. It, it's what I have available at the time. So I'm just going to take advantage of the opportunity. And, you know, I, like I was thinking post Letharia species or, you know, uh, tarantulas that are more difficult to kind of get, get your hands on. That's what I was, yeah. I was hoping to do. But I really think I need to. The, the ones that are more difficult to get your hands on are the ones that are more difficult to breed, though. That's the only downside. Yeah, so I know, I know I with figure. pokies, uh, it's not as simple as, say, with uh, your uh, embalfori. I mean, even with the, the brachypamahamori, whilst the pairing can be quite smooth and simple, getting the female to drop an egg sac from what I've read uh, and from other people's experiences is not always that easy to do. Sometimes it can take around 13 months for the for her to gestate and then drop the egg sac. I mean, that's just crazy. That's, that's a long time. But Yeah, it is. But yeah. I, yeah. I had that issue with my, uh, 
avicularia. I had bred them and twice actually, and she was getting plump. I was like, she's definitely going to drop an egg sac. And then, uh, like nothing happened. And I was like, this is getting so frustrating. Did she molt out? Normally that's what they do. They get to a point where you yeah. think they're either going to drop an egg sac or they're going to molt out. And it's the worst when they molt out. It's like, no, why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happens. But it's a good achievement. I mean, it, it's, it, it does feel good when you know that you've done a successful breeding. So, so uh, my, I, I, Tried breeding my avicularia. Um, she molted out, didn't drop a sack. Tried paired her again, nothing happened. And then, like that, I waited probably about nine, ten months after her second pairing. She had not dropped an egg sack, and then she died of old age. So I was like, "Well, okay. that." Yeah, I had gotten her at a pet shop. She was like one of the first tarantulas I'd ever gotten, or actually, no, I got her from. I think it was Fear Not Tarantulas. I think it was the first tarantula I ever got from them, and when I. I went back and like looked at the records and like she was already an adult female when I bought her. So I have a feeling that she was like, they were breeding her, <laughs> you know, like yeah, she had, possibly. Uh, <laughs> had kind of, yeah, she was already like at the end of uh, her ability to breed. And they're like, well, we're going to sell off this female. <laughs> and I bought it, had her for a few years. And so it was like nothing in, like she didn't die of like, um, uh, I mean, she, she wasn't starved. She, you know, her enclosure was great. She, it was just, you know, I just slowly watched her kind of deteriorate yeah. over months. And I was like, yeah, she's, she's just reached the end of her life. Maybe that's why she didn't drop a sack. Yeah. Just then I had an, I had a, um, a Singapore blue molt out male and surprised me because I had thought I had sex the molt and it was a female. And apparently I'm not very good at that. So I had, very obvious. It went from purple to bright gold. And I'm like, all right. So I waited for it to make a sperm web, tried to, I had a female and, it just, it didn't work. Like she, uh, they mated once and I, I, I mean, I watched it. I know there was insertion, but she like never dropped an egg sac and then ended up molting. And I'm like, well, there goes that. And by that point he had passed away. Oh, so damn. Just like, I'm just not good at this. And, uh, but now, you know, I, I, I've been kind of keeping my eye on these two and, you know, I think I'm going to actually record it, like film myself doing it because I think. One one thing I've noticed is if there's something I'm not a hundred percent on, you know, or even if I feel like I know exactly what I'm doing, I I will, will film it and make a video out of it, put it out there, and inevitably somebody will know better and yeah. will contact me and be like, hey, you're you know this this is where you're messing up or you know this is the mistake you're making, yeah, correct that, you know. So it's as much as I it, try to make videos to educate people, it's also um, a way to get educated myself, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> like, it's it's nice like because i can put it all out there like this is exactly the process and people are like oh okay we'll change this or change that it really helps out a lot and i've 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 noticed that with uh like i have some snakes and i don't make many youtube videos on them because it seems anytime i i venture away from tarantulas nobody is in, is watching <laughs> you know like i made a this video on isopods uh, I got some clown isopods from Russ over at Aquaramax, and I was really excited. Like, they're really cool looking, and I had, like, a new lens and really enjoyed making the video. I thought I got some really cool shots. And, and you like, did. This video's going to blow remember, up. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching the premiere, and I was like, wow, that is a fantastic shot, that is. Never seen, I've yeah. never seen an isopod that close up before. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it. But when I look at that video ranked with other videos, it, it performed horribly. <laughs> like it just wasn't something people were generally interested in seeing. So yeah. it, it, it kind of makes sense. I mean, I built this channel and worked the algorithm for tarantulas. So I put something out about isopods. It may not appeal to people. I had the same happen. I did a video on uh, my mantis feeding it was a great video I took a, a time lapse of her eating a locust and it was absolutely fantastic I put a video together I saw that one yeah but it's done that was cool yeah compared to my other ones it's it's not hit as well but again that's because my content is primarily tarantulas so then I throw out to the algorithm no this is a mantis video <laughs> I don't think yeah. it liked it <laughs> <laughs> right so I, I've avoided doing videos on my snakes for that reason. Mm -hmm. Occasionally they'll make like a little appearance here and there, or I'll post a picture of them on Instagram. And I've started getting 
messages from people that want to see some content, you know, on my ball python or my king snakes. And I'm hesitant to do it, partially because I'm like, it's just not going to be a very well performing video. But sometimes you just got to make those videos that don't perform well, just, you know, to kind of round things out. But it's also part of me is just kind of nervous. Like if, if there's one aspect of my collection I'm the least um, confident in or the most insecure about, it's uh, my my snake husbandry. You know, I don't want to, I definitely don't want to make a husbandry video like this is how you keep the snake. Yeah. Like I'm doing the, the best I can through my own research, but I'm also fairly new. I mean, compared to like I've been keeping tarantulas since 2000, I've been keeping snakes since like 2018. <laughs> you know, I don't have near the experience that uh you know a lot of other people do but part of me is like i need to get over that insecurity and put that video out there for the i mean even if the only reason is to kind of put myself on blast and have people be like hey that's not cool you need to fix this about your enclosure or you know your husbandry and make me a better keeper and if that makes but that's it if you if you have that right frame of mind that you're going to put out that video and if somebody comes back and says you know, you're not doing it, that's not the way to do it, or you would, the snake would benefit if you did it this way, and you take that criticism on board, and then you change your husbandry, that's, that's, that's perfect, that, I mean, I, I think the scary thing is, is when you put something out there, and you're not confident in what you've done, is if you just have somebody, like, slate you for it, whereas if you're putting the video out there, because you're saying, hey, look, I'm not perfect, so if you've got any advice or there's anything you think I can change, then I'll take it on board. Then you should do you should do it. Yeah, you should do it. Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I probably will. That's one of my goals this year is to get some more reptile uh, content on the channel. Um, but the, I guess what kind of is got, like I have some leopard geckos, and I mean I've kept amphibians and small reptiles since I was like a, like third grade or something you know no like, way. would get a turtle and and little tree frogs and salamanders or newts and anoles like the, pretty much whatever the cheapest reptile they had at the pet store is what i could convince my parents to get me and <laughs> you know I, so i had i had a bunch of those and always did well with them so you know i i got i i bought my son a leopard gecko we were at the pet store i was buying a tarantula and he kind of expressed some interest. Like, he didn't really seem too interested in the spiders, but expressed some interest in this gecko. And I was like, well, this could be a bonding thing, something we could do together. So I was like, sure. Didn't even ask his mom. I was like, we're just going to get the gecko. And I uh, had, like, all the – I pretty much had everything I needed already for its enclosure. Got it all set up and was joined some uh, leopard gecko Facebook groups, and uh, it was just eviscerated. <laughs> you know, like, you had people in one group saying – you can only keep them on paper towels. Everything else is dangerous. And then another Facebook group is like, you can only keep them on reptile carpet. Paper towels are dangerous. So, you know, sand is dangerous. It's cause impaction. And so it was like, I was so confused. Like, you know, I, I read the care guides. I've kept them before. Like, why? And I mean, one group was uh, all about bioactive enclosures for leopard geckos. Another group was all about how dangerous bioactive enclosures are for geckos. <laughs> and I'm like, these are completely two opposite theories that, uh, you know, they're completely in conflict and I don't know what is right. And I actually got kicked out of one Facebook group because somebody like uh, they were talking about keeping geckos communally. Uh, do you have any leopard geckos before? we? Move no, on? No, no, I haven't. No. I, I've personally never owned them. Um, oh, OK. I know people that have, what? but I've never owned them myself. They're really cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoy them. And there's some people that keep their leopard gecko, they'll have like two or three in one enclosure and they get along well. I mean, it really depends on their age and, and what sex they are. Yeah. And other people are like, you can't keep them together ever. It's dangerous. So it's it was hard trying to figure out, well, what's the truth here? So I erred on the side of caution. I kept them separately. Initially, I had one in just a, a normal kind of, you know, reptile, reptile what, I don't know what they call it in the UK. It's just that it's like carpet, like AstroTurf. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. Roll into the bottom of the enclosure. And then the other one I kept bioactive. It kind of like is an experiment because I was like, I don't know who to trust here. Uh, and I don't know enough about them to, you know, consider, you know, to, I don't know, to, to really like be an expert on the situation. So mm -hmm. it was like an experiment. Like, well, we'll see how this one does on the bioactive and see how this, and it might, with my, my specimens, I guess the one that was in the bioactive was thriving. You know, it was walking, it was out in the open a lot more. Uh, it, it seemed a lot more active. Uh, a lot, it was, it just seemed healthier. 
so I, I switched the other enclosure to bioactive as well and you know it's they've been doing really well and i kind of want to like talk about them in a video but i know that it's it's going to cause problems people are going to lose their mind they you know but what, what can you do i guess yeah so much um uh, families come home now <laughs> okay <laughs> so sorry if there's a bit of disturbance with noise <laughs> that's okay <laughs> This is the one thing I do as a YouTuber is film it in my, my front room so that you can always hear in my videos the squawking of my budgie who's actually been very well behaved right now or uh, my daegu rattling his cage but he's been quite too sleeping, the dog barking, yeah, <laughs> it's never quiet in my arms Richard. <laughs> so it sounds like you have quite a diverse collection, like what, what all do you have there? Uh, so... I've got a budgie that's free range. <laughs> it's not cage confined, so occasionally we just start flying around my living room. Uh, I have uh, an iguana, but the iguana is not mine. I'm looking after her for Tarantula Dan. And I've got a Daegu, two tortoises that are currently in hibernation. I miss them. <laughs> I think they've been hibernating now for nine weeks, which is crazy. Imagine sleeping that long. I'd love it. <laughs> Uh, and then I've got uh, seven royal pythons or bull pythons. Uh, and then all of the inverts, yeah. So the only different inverts that I've got, bar from tarantulas, is a mantis and some blue death flaming beetles. Yeah. Nice. They are awesome. Those beetles are very Oh, cool. I've got a scorpion yeah. as well, sorry. I've got the... Do you? What kind of, what kind of scorpion? Hadruris arizensis. The desert yeah. hairy scorpion, yeah. Crazy little angry ball of craziness. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> yeah, that thing has no fear. I have mine up like on the top shelf of my rack. And so it's like right at eye level. And sometimes I'll come up to its enclosure and it'll run out of its little burrow right up to like the glass staring me in the eye. It's like, yeah. what? I'm like, hey, back, be cool. Yeah. <laughs> they really are. It's <laughs> like they, they, they have no fear, do they? Do like, you want some? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it. Yeah. <laughs> no fear whatsoever. But they're really I cool. I actually got some um, blue death feigning beetles from um, uh, Peter over at Bugs in Cyberspace. He's out in Oregon here in the U.S. And he, he sent me a bunch of different desert beetles. He and I were talking about uh, different scorpions that can be kept communally. Uh, and one, I, I don't remember if it was a, it was in one of our videos. I think we did together. We did a collab. Um, and before we had made the video, we were discussing keeping scorpions communally and different species and success rates and stuff. And he was saying that there are not a lot that can be kept communally. Um, but he said there are some communal enclosures that you can have different species of desert inverts in that would, they would cohabitate. And one of them that he suggested I try was the desert hairy scorpion um and the blue death fanning beetles. yes yeah and a few other little desert beetles that he had and i was like i don't know he's like well i'll send them to you he essentially was like i'll give i'll give you these beetles so you don't have to like put money into it and if it goes wrong then you're not out the cash or whatever um so it was kind of we'll try it out so i i made this desert enclosure for uh the desert her airy scorpion I made a video on it um and then he's i got that in the mail i put the the blue death fanning beetles in there not entirely sure it was going to work you know it was kind of like this could be a disaster like especially with as i don't want to say aggressive but I, that's probably the best word like it's it's kind of an aggressive scorpion has no fear they have and it, it has they have a strong spirit <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it it does not it, it's like it doesn't even notice the the, the fanning beetles like it's, sometimes i'll walk across its path and it'll like kind of punch them with its claw like get out of my way but it doesn't mess with them it, it hasn't eaten any of them they are they're both cohabitating very well yeah um, it, so and it's they clean up the enclosure which is nice like uh if he doesn't eat the entire cricket then you know they'll, they'll come by and, and clean that up and, it and like, they'll eat the rest yeah. on me. but yeah. it, it's madness that is that they can live together although i'm under strict instructions to not put my death raining beetles in with my scorpion because my daughter Mini Rocker, she's known through uh, through my channel. Yeah, she mm -hmm. loves the death raining beetles, and so she will. She's the one that takes care of them. She will feed them, clean them, and everything. But she's right into death with the scorpion. I don't blame her. <laughs> I don't want her anywhere near the scorpion. So, so she's like, <laughs> don't put them in there. 
But the first thing yeah. that somebody had suggested to me was to put them together. Yeah. yeah it, it's not a guarantee. I put some in with my, um, uh, I have a hissing scorpion and they were living well together for a few months. And then one day I came down and it wasn't a blue death fainting beetle. Though. I think it was just like the rough death fainting beetle. It's essentially the same thing, but it's more black. It's got more of a, a rough kind of shell onto it, but it, it, I don't know if it ate it or just killed it, but it did. It, it got sick of it being in its enclosure, so I just like. And it's hard with those because I couldn't tell if it was actually dead or not, you know, because they play dead. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'll give it a day. And I came back the next day; it was still kind of laying there on its back. I was like, oh, we'll give it another day. <laughs> <laughs> Messing with. But they, I was like, okay, yeah. They can pretend to be dead for quite some time. I had one that did it. Um, yeah. Could have been a couple of hours. It was just laying there, and I was doing the same thing. Oh, I just, I'll give it, I'll give it some more time, give it some more time. Then all of a sudden, it flips over and it's like, "Hey, <laughs> so, what are you like? <laughs> Why would you do that to me? <laughs> I could have, I could have buried you then, <laughs> buried you alive." <Yeah. laughs> but I, uh, scorpions are something I didn't have any intention really of getting into. It was, I, I don't even. I always wanted like an Asian forest scorpion or an emperor scorpion. So that was kind of the one species I was going to get. And I went to a local pet shop uh, and you know, one of those like box chain stores. And uh, they had, this, it was an Asian forest scorpion and it was like on clearance and then 50% off clearance. So it was like $7. It was oh, like, bless it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I don't know if it's sick or what. And they were like, well, no, it just hasn't sold. And, like, after we have a species for so long, we just clearance them out. And I was like, all right, well, I'll take it home. And I really enjoyed it. And that's it's the danger. I, it, that's why I, I've made a few videos on this topic. But there's a, for me personally, there's uh, this, this danger when I get bored or uh, just unsatisfied in life that sometimes I will... Uh, kind of binge online shopping and instead of buying books off amazon or you know whatever it is i used to do i end up buying tarantulas or scorpions <laughs> i don't know if you can uh, relate I to that at all but totally relate to you but i was very proud of myself <laughs> the other day i was surfing the spider shop uh uk their website but i only bought cork bark and a couple of enclosures <laughs> And I was so proud of myself because I didn't Very add impressive. a tarantula to the basket. I actually messaged a friend and said, you'll never guess what I just did. <laughs> just shopped with a spider shop but didn't buy a tarantula. And I was like, are you all right? Are yeah. you feeling all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I came across a uh, a website here, this couple that ha it's called pinchersandpokies.com. And they've got nice. all kinds nice of name. And I was... Yeah, and and I I get in this this sick cycle in my head where it's like, oh, well, I'm gonna get these two scorpions, and I go to check out, and I see like how much shipping costs compared to how much the scorpions are, and I'm like, well, I'm paying almost twice as much, I'm spending like twice as much on shipping as I am on the scorpions, or maybe I should add a few more, <laughs> you know, and then before you know it, I've got like eight scorpions on their way, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that that escalated quickly, <laughs> so now I think. I have almost as many scorpions in my collection as I do tarantulas, which is no kind of mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not, I didn't buy all of them. They, I, I ordered from multiple uh, dealers and it seemed every one of them was sending me a gravid female. So I've just like, just <laughs> had this constant uh, influx of babies. So I've got Arizona bark scorpions, Florida bark scorpions, striped bark scorpions, and um, striped devil uh desert scorpion and there was one more uh, four four of them have have, have uh had broods which is like and i, I sent a hundred of them off to a dealer and i've got another hundred in the nursery right now that i want to send off as soon as the weather permits and i think that my florida bark i got another gravid florida bark scorpion and i have a couple of parthenogenic species so i have a feeling at any time there will be even more scorpions so it's but they're fascinating i really enjoy them scorpions coming out of your ears <laughs> yeah i've only ever yeah. the only other scorpion i've owned is uh uh yeah the hmm, gosh you just said the name of it no i can't remember i didn't have it asian for long. yes Emperor? i didn't have it for okay. long though unfortunately but that that again was one that i brought because it was kind of cheap 
it was going cheap and I was like yeah I'll have it uh, but it, it kind of came to me and I wasn't convinced that it was a young scorpion it just didn't seem like it and then unfortunately yeah a couple of uh, I think it was a couple of weeks later I don't know if I did anything wrong I mean I, I changed its setup to be as people had recommended um Mm-hmm. and I was hoping that that was enough for it but yeah and it was feeding it was eating yeah. then I got up one morning and it had just started which was sad but yeah I don't yeah. have a massive um massive amount of experience with it and in actual fact I, I had always said to myself I wasn't going to have a scorpion in my collection that they didn't I, I, they didn't do anything for me that's that's how sure. I felt and then I won a competition uh with Lee's Creature Features and my uh, prize that came was the uh, Desert Hairy Scorpion. That was my prize. So that was my first ever scorpion. And it fascinates nice. me, yeah. So we're like, yeah. actually, the thought of having one that is gravid and then having babies is, yeah, I quite like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're different than, tra- like, they're very similar in a lot of aspects as far as uh, care and husbandry. But they're different enough in their personality that it's 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 like a whole nother genre oh, of uh, yeah. exotic pet keeping. And uh, it, there's also a huge lack of accessible information out there. Like, you, you can find some websites that have care sheets. Uh, but one of the first things I do when I see a care sheet is check the date, you know. And it's like, well, that was written 10 years ago or six years ago, I'm sure there's been some developments in the husbandry of the species, but it's sometimes it's difficult to find. And there are people out there that, you know, are breeding them and keeping, you know, hundreds of them, they have all kinds of different species and they're very knowledgeable, but you know, like we were talking about earlier, it takes a certain type of personality to, to be willing to like make a video and post that publicly about a species or yeah. really even just take the time to write something out and like build a website. You know, it, it's, it's not, maybe it's not too difficult. I mean, it's time consuming and, and to like type out a care sheet, but then all the the work in the background of building a website and having it, you know, at least with SEO and backlinking so that it even shows up in a Google search yeah, is a lot of work and can be, I mean, it's, it's not expensive, but it does cost money just to host a website, you know, or, or pay a subscription for Squarespace or something where you can build one. So it's, it's not something that a lot of people really want to do, you know, like, do I really want to take my hard earned money to host a website? just to tell people how to take care of a scorpion, you know? So it's, it, I was struggling finding a lot of information on different species. And, and that's another goal this year is to make more scorpion content. Like try just try to, cause I feel like it's, there's a lot of people that keep scorpions for one, but not as it's not growing or not as big as the tarantula hobby, but I think it has the potential to be, you know? So I think if there's more videos out there, more people get any interested in them, more up-to-date information available, I agree. That it, it might be something that, that grows, you know, because it, does it seem like over in the UK that the tarantula hobby has almost been growing exponentially the past few years? Is that something you have noticed or has it always just kind of been big over there? I would say, yeah, no, I, I would say it's grown a lot over the last few years here. Um, when I first was keeping tarantulas, it was kind of unheard of. You know, people would come around and be like, oh, who keeps a tarantula? Like nobody would ever know anybody that kept a tarantula. I was kind of the only one within, you know, the people close to me that knew me or anything like that. And yeah, it's definitely taken off. I mean, you've got new people coming into the community every day. Every day there's somebody new that will pop up on a on the Facebook group and say, hi, I'm just getting into the hobby or hi, I'm thinking about getting into the hobby. So, yeah. It's definitely grown massively, the tarantula hobby has. And where the scorpions are concerned, I do think that some people either start with scorpions and then transition to tarantulas or have tarantulas and then go to scorpions. But like me, I was very much, I'm not going to have a scorpion. Then inadvertently got one because it was a prize. Didn't buy it myself. And now I love it. And yeah. now I'm thinking, actually, you know, let's let's kind of look at this and get another one. And yeah. So well, I can definitely yeah. see that growing as well. Yeah. Uh, and centipedes. They seem to be kind Ooh. of getting a tad popular now, than, more so than what they <laughs> used to be. But I, I'm not having a centipede. <laughs> yeah. She said. I feel you. I have, I have one. And uh, I actually, I've had a few over over my time. I, But I, I have run into an issue um, and it's something that, you know, I try to warn people about is sometimes when you buy inverts at reptile shows, 
you're buying them from reptile dealers and they probably have uh, immaculate reptile stock that they're selling but then just to kind of fill out the table or whatever they they buy some wild caught you know they, they, they just buy some inverts to have on the table to sell to you know turn a little bit more of a profit have a little more of a selection and i've it seems like anytime i buy an invert in that situation they don't live very long uh like i got a um a death stalker scorpion i ordered from somebody that mainly was uh, at the time was mainly selling reptiles and it showed up and i mean right out of the out of the box like I, I even i think i did the unboxing live or in a video or something people were like a scorpion doesn't look right you know it's a desert scorpion it needs a very dry environment if it if it's too humid it, it develops i think it's mycosis or something like that it's like a um a fungal kind of growth yeah. on its exoskeleton that's if unless it molts soon and can kind of you know get out of that it, it will end up killing it and it didn't like it maybe lived a couple of weeks after the video was uh, you know it had eaten a few times but it just didn't look right uh it was able to use one of its claws very well and i was kind of disappointed uh, and so i and I, same similar situation with a um a sun spider i had i had purchased from a different dealer that didn't really deal in inverts and they just they just didn't live very long after uh, arriving and it was like so close after arriving that i was like it couldn't even really have been my husbandry it had to have you know been bad off beforehand yeah there must have been some kind of underlying issue before you got it yeah Yeah. i know i see what you're saying and then i I just discovered a lot of them were wild caught so i mean they didn't know if it had parasites or how old it was or anything like that it was just more like you know we're buying these wild caught species and immediately selling them and we don't really know how to take care of them or anything so i've i've stopped kind of jumping down that rabbit hole it's like i don't want to deal with that anymore um yeah and, and it's it's frustrating um but but it, it's also uh, i think that as the scorpion and like with the centipedes for instance I, I had got a vietnamese centipede and it just like i got it i had it for a week and it it just died like it never really settled into its enclosure or anything and i was like talking to people that know a lot about centipedes so i had the enclosure built like how they would how they've successfully kept them for years but it just it started off on a bad foot and never recovered but then i have another that i never see it like maybe once every other month i'll see it out on top uh it eats it's doing well it's i've had it it's it's probably been almost two years now and it's it seems to be doing well but it it's they're not my cup of tea (laughs) like i'm not like bashing centipedes but they're freaking crazy. Yeah, they're, I mean, they fascinate me, uh, but yeah. they're not my they're not my cup of tea either. Like, I, I, I don't <laughs> think that I could, I could have one. No, I mean, I like watching videos yeah. on them. So Garth uh, Racknatube, he did a he did a great video on his. Um, even uh, Couch Locked Arachnophobia, he's done a few videos on his as well, and I'll watch them, and it fascinates me. But then uh, if somebody was to say, here, do you want one? I'd be like, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just yeah, watch other but people. But those are also uh, famous last words, though. I mean, I, I, I felt the same way about tarantulas. I was scared to death of spiders. Like, I will never. Why would anybody want to own a tarantula? And then I got one. <laughs> and then that slowly developed over, you know, a couple decades into having a, a basement full of them. Yep. But it was like, oh, I have no interest in scorpions. And then you get one. And then before you know it, now, now you, you're fascinated by those. So maybe it, one day the same will be true with centipedes. And it, in the, yeah, it is it is true. And I was saying that about scorpions. And I was saying, oh, we'll watch videos and they fascinate me, but I don't ever want one. And now I've got one. And, and I think that once you get one and then you realize, actually, I can look after it. And it isn't as scary as you kind of led to believe or that you believe it, it it is and then you kind of see it in a different way don't you when you become a keeper of an animal you look at them differently or at least I do anyway and then and then you realize yeah. actually yeah you do have the confidence to actually look after this animal you will be fine <laughs> <laughs> but still I'm well, I feel like no, with on the, on the centipedes <laughs> yeah well with tarantulas and most scorpions I kind of get the feel like it's something that initially I was nervous dealing with or afraid of and after time and experience, I realized they're much more scared of me. You know, yeah. like I terrify them. And it kind of is like it's this uh, this understanding that develops and this this power differential kind of changes. But with centipedes, I feel like they're not scared of me at all. <laughs> like, no, I'm still no, centipedes more are not scared, scared of, of anything, are can't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, hopefully, uh, I'll get more comfortable with them as time goes on. But right now, it's... Like I'm afraid 
and, and that's weird a grown man to be saying he's afraid of something uh, publicly <laughs> but that's why i haven't done any videos really on it is because like if it's out i'll record some footage but usually as soon as that lights on it and the camera's rolling i got maybe like 20 seconds before it, it goes back down into hiding yeah. its burrow and it's back underground and it's, you just can't and, and with a lot of my tarantulas like i'm rehousing them or something i can i can take them out of their enclosure and film them on the table and get a lot of footage of them but i'm not doing that with the centipede because i think it's so <laughs> fast you don't fancy doing so that with the centipede then <laughs> I mean, it was hard enough doing, uh, I, I did a video, um, uh, the top 10 blue tarantulas and I had pulled out my adult female post Lotharia metallica and was sweating the entire time because I mean, she, she's a pretty calm specimen. Like I got lucky in that aspect, but I also know that she's very fast and, and very venomous. Be, and, yeah. yeah. So I was like, I'm filming her and I'm getting more comfortable, but always in the back of my mind, I'm like, she could bolt faster than you can catch her, you know? So luckily yeah. it, it went with no it, there was an issue like the table i use which is a bone i gotta pick with uh mr grendler because i feel like he totally ripped off my table but <laughs> i'm just kidding uh i have my table is like very low to the ground it's maybe a foot and a half two feet off the ground you know and i chose that table mainly just in case the tarantula were to run off the side it wouldn't it wouldn't have very fall to you know if like i was sitting down it would be at the level my hands are you know it's 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 really low and it's got this like fabric around the outside. So even if it went over the edge, it's not like a sheer drop. You know, no. it, it has plenty of stuff it can grab onto. The issue I was having with my P Metallica though is that it would go over that edge. And once it kind of went over the edge and was out of the bright light, it would take off and go underneath the table. So I had to like take everything off the table, put the table on, on its side, capture it in a catch cup, put the table back, set it back on the table, record for a few minutes, and then it was back under the table again. I was like, Jesus, I was cussing up a storm. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, it, we love fun. that unpredictable side of them. You know, even though like yeah. it was hard work, I bet afterwards you still felt satisfied. Like, yeah, I achieved the footage that I wanted. The spider gave me the runaround. All is gravy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had a good fun. I think I even... uh put out a video of me trying to record some footage of my scorpion and and just the the it was like a time lapse video of getting like five seconds of shot and then the scorpion just taking i off saw that direction, having to capture it bring it back yeah. Yeah. i saw that, that video so frustrating. It was like running from one end to the table to the other. <laughs> they don't cooperate it's do like they <laughs> not at all not at all <laughs> but then i have other species it's like they know what i'm doing and they just want to show off like my fauna pelma hensi uh, texas brown tarantula was it was amazing like i would get it would like just sit there at the table while i set up the camera and everything and as soon as i start recording would just slowly walk towards the lens or something i was like you it's like you're made you're trained to be on tv yeah, it, knew ex it knew exactly what it was doing yeah yeah <laughs> it's like That's i've nice got this strutting its stuff showing itself <laughs> off yeah <laughs> yeah so what's the what species of of reptile or invert in your collection are you the most nervous filming or interacting with um oh actually well, that's quite a question to be honest because i don't i don't know i would quite happily film any of them i mean i've got uh histocrats gigas they can be a little bit unnerving because they're quite quick um uh, and can bolt out if you're trying to kind of get it to come out of its burrow so that you can take a photo or film it, you know, with one false move and then it's gone and that's out over the side of the, the enclosure. Yeah. Um, but I don't think there's anything that I wouldn't feel comfortable filming. I mean, most of the filming I do, I don't do it how you do it, where I get them out and put them on the table and stuff. But I, if I'm, say, filming a, a feed-in, then I will have the lid completely off of the enclosure and, you know, kind of, camera right in there and then angles and stuff like yesterday I filmed my uh Dele diamantinensis and that's a pretty quick tarantula when it wants to be and it's not it's not fully grown so it's still at that skittish kind of stage uh, but I had the the sure. lid off of, it, of its enclosure and you know I thought well I've got my catch cup so I've got everything I need if it bolts then I'll get it so I think if you go into it and I, I'm very much like that anything I do I have to make sure that I've got everything I need right beside me so you catch up to everything so that I feel in control 
And if I feel in control, then I don't feel that nervous uh, about filming. But like I said, I don't get them out like you do. <laughs> to feel, I think if I did that, it would be a different kettle of fish. Like, yeah, but I definitely wouldn't get uh, my, my puppy out <laughs> onto a table. Yeah. Just even the thought of doing that, I'm like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> He's all good <laughs> in his enclosure. <laughs> but yeah. So for the people that are going to be uh, joining this Fatal Fangs 3 feeding competition, do you have any tips or, um, you know, like suggestions about what they can do to kind of put the best video out there? Like, well, maybe what the judges are looking for or what the audience would be looking for or what you've learned from the past two Fatal Fangs that, what you know works and what doesn't work um i think first and foremost the video that i released yesterday the, the, the three judges uh, are on there actually giving what they're looking for so i think the best thing is to obviously take what they're saying so that you can develop or create your video your clips to please them and entertain them if you like um for me, I didn't enter Fatal Fangs 1, I entered Fatal Fangs 2 and I just filmed every single feeding that I did in the hopes that I was going to get some great takedowns. Uh, I wish, look, reflection, looking back now, I wish I'd have done it a lot differently. I wish I'd have got more camera angles and things So, because a couple of mine were just overhead uh, shots or I didn't move the camera at all. My last few yeah. rounds, I did move the camera. I tried to make the last few rounds my better clips. But in retrospect, I should have made all of my clips as if I was competing in the, the final round. So rather than using, say, what I thought was my weakest clip as for my round one, I went up against Mark's tarantulas in round one with my weakest oh, clip. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was my biggest that... downfall. So a, a bit yeah. of advice would be, Make each clip count as if it's you're taking part in the final with each clip, because if you do that, then you know you, you shouldn't you shouldn't go wrong. And as long as you try your best and you put your best effort into it, then if you do get knocked out, then don't feel bad because you still put out a great clip. You still put the time and effort into creating that clip, and you're part of the competition regardless. So, yeah. For me, I think definitely the biggest thing would be create each clip like you're taking part in the final because you just don't know who you're going to go up against. And we've got some people yeah. this time round that have joined the Facebook group that haven't, well, they definitely wasn't in Fatal Fangs 2. Um, and I'm very excited to see what it is they're going to bring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very excited. Yeah, I think I drive some people in the YouTube community a little um, crazy. Because one of like my kind of uh, mantras, or uh, I don't know exactly what you call it, but <laughs> like I I try anything I put out, you know, on YouTube or even if it's on somebody else's channel, I, I like I kind of have this this uh, mental. Um, I, I I'm stumbling over my words. <laughs> I'm not completely awake yet. I I, <laughs> I try I, the ethos. I don't know if that's the right word. I have to look that up later. But <laughs> I, I I film it and edit it as if a million people are going to see it yeah. you know like would i be happy if, if a million people saw this video because you never know what what could all of a sudden go viral for no reason at all you know so i i always want to you know kind of portray the channel in the best light possible you know or, or you know have a great example of what kind of content i'm putting out there so even if somebody's like hey will you film a 30 second clip they're talking about this this whatever for for a video i'm doing it's like yeah i will but i am going to use you know the all my lights and cameras and mics and everything i can so that it's the best possible clip the, to put out there which sometimes is ridiculous and and i understand that it's, it's stupid but it's also like you know i, I don't know who's going to see it and so i always want to kind of put my best foot forward uh with that stuff and that's so i mean that's one thing that i i have suggested to people whether they're making a youtube video or they're you know filming something for fatal fangs like you know yeah. do the best you can with every video clip even no matter how inconsequential it is you know because you never know who's going to be watching it and that's it that's, that's exactly it and i and i kind of do the same with my videos I, I suppose um it's i mean for me it's got to be exactly how i want it to be first and foremost and then you know i do have in the back of my mind like who's going to watch it you know is this going to be a, a big video will it be a tiny video that kind of thing and 
I think as long as you're happy with your content, then put it out there. Um, and I'm going to stumble over what I was going to say now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, always have in the back of your mind that a lot of people could be watching it. And with, Fat- with Fatal Fangs, obviously, you've got these three amazing judges that are going to be judging the clips. So... <laughs> <laughs> I was so glad that the public voted for you. So, obviously, for uh, the full Fatal Fangs 2, we had three judges. One was from the UK, one was from the US, and one was from South Africa. And uh, the, the guy from South Africa was Leon Laskin, and he's actually wanting to compete this time. So we had to find a third judge. And I let the um, the past contestants, future contestants, viewers, fans actually choose who that third judge should be. And you won by uh, quite a huge majority vote, to be <laughs> honest. There was a lot of names yeah. uh, and YouTubers that were suggested to be the, the uh, judge. But, yeah, you came out over all top. <laughs> so I, was so I didn't glad follow you said, that yeah, post you, very well. You kept me waiting as well. Like, I got people messaging, has he replied back? Yeah, I'm like, no. No, no, no. <laughs> and then when you replied saying, yeah, I can do that, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> I was jumping around. I had, I had seen the uh, original post because somebody like mentioned me in the comments. So it was like you, you got tagged in this comment, and I look at it, and I was like, oh, that was nice of him. But, I mean, I also saw uh, Dave's Little Beasties and Alex from Tarantula Haven, yeah. and, and there was there was a good mix of judges. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm sure uh, one of those guys are going to win and like never revisited the post. And then I saw that message from you and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I had so, the post running on my Instagram uh, as well as on Facebook and my community tab on YouTube. So I took all of the votes collectively from the three posts and yeah, you came out on top. You had a lot of people mention you, <laughs> a lot of people... <laughs> Well, that's probably because they, did, they didn't want to go up against me. <laughs> <laughs> we were joking about this yesterday, saying that's probably why, but I really don't think it was. I just think you people have such massive respect for you uh, in the kind of guy that you are. You're genuine, you know, you, you, you come across like you would be very impartial and you would judge so fairly everybody's clips. And, yeah, that's, I think, what everybody why everybody wanted you yeah well, well thank you <laughs> well it's good it's good I, i'm so excited and it seems that everybody is so the three judges you included kelly critters and creations being the winner of fatal friends 2 and then rob from uh, ibbins arachnids is coming back he was a judge in fatal friends 2 and he's also going to judge fatal friends 2 yeah very cool he's got yeah, i'm looking forward to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll be good be, it should be exciting. good it should be good but i don't think uh the actual tournament itself will kick off where i'm showing it on my channel so the start of round one i don't think that's going to be kicking off for probably a good i don't know maybe looking at kind of april time just because i've got to oh, wow. give i've got to give the contestants that are taking part enough time to give me their clips and then once they send me the clips, obviously I'm going to then need the time to edit the videos. Uh, and then I'll have to send uh, the judges. What I'll do is send the judges the link to the video. You will then watch it first. You will then choose who your winner is from each battle. Send your answers back to me. And then I'll go to the second video. And yeah, so so on and so on. So it'll kind of work as a chain reaction once we get going. Um, but getting it going, I think we're probably looking at about April time before it actually kicks okay. off completely. Just because I want to give people enough time to A, enter. Uh, so, yes, I'll be opening that post or, sorry, putting the post in the group on the 20th of January. But I'm going to let that run and be open for a couple of weeks before I close it. Then when I close it, everybody's going to have six weeks to get their clips to me. Yeah, And then so- my, my hard work then begins. <laughs> <laughs> I got so we should make sure that if you're listening and you want to make sure you don't miss the fatal fangs go ahead and head over to pet rock and rolls youtube channel and subscribe and turn on notifications so you get alerted when she uh initially starts uploading those now one th- one thing uh, you probably have addressed this and i just missed it um but w- the judges see the first round of um of feeding videos and then they make their decision yeah and so i would send you back 
uh, a video like, well, this is who I chose and this is why. Now, are you going to edit the judge's decision at the end of the first round video or are you going to put the are you going to announce the winners in the second video? How, how no. does that, how's that going to so work? So I will announce the winners in the second video. So the first round, the first round will go out. So it'll be round one. Um, if we have 64 contestants, I may have to do it uh, round one, part one, round one, part two, just because it would be such a lengthy video otherwise. Um, so I might have to do it in two parts. But yeah, I will obviously get your answers and then not announce them until round two. So at the beginning of round two, I would say, here were the judges' decisions from round one, and then play the round two clips, which you will then have already seen, and you will have given me the answers for me to then do into the round three, and so on and so on. Yeah, it's a bit tricky uh, to kind of grasp, uh, but yeah, I, I will be the controller of all of that, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so just just from the viewers' um, kind of uh, aspect. Will it be once it starts? Will there be a new round every week? Yes. Or what kind of? Okay, so it'll kind of be like the same time, same day. Yeah, every same time, week, same day. It will be a premiere as well, so you can jump in the live chat whilst it plays. Yeah. So yeah, it'd be pretty fun. I do. I haven't picked the day yet because obviously my upload day for my channel is a Wednesday. Um, I think if I do it on a Wednesday, then I will be kind of giving myself a chance to put my own my own content out not that fatal fangs three isn't my content because obviously it is because i'm editing it all and putting it all together but i mean like it's not my journey yeah it's not me kind of vlogging as you like about what's going on with my tarantulas and and that kind of stuff so it may well be that i perhaps do it on a, on a, on a weekend so maybe on a maybe on a sunday or maybe monday i'm not i'm not too sure yet i might put a kind of mm -hmm. boat out there and see what what day people think is best but it will be kind of yeah. late evening well, for us here in the uk so that it's hopefully the time's right for anybody in the us or or anywhere else in the world yeah i don't know how deep you've dug into like the analytical tools with youtube but you know if there there is youtube has uh under the audience tab, I believe, in your analytics, it will tell you the optimal time to upload. Yeah. I don't know. So maybe, you know, check that out. Mine, see, mine is a Wednesday, a Wednesday is evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine is, is like uh, 11 a.m. Monday through Thursday, and then it's like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Quite specific. That's pretty early. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm excited. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. I think it's 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 very cool uh, kind of thing you guys got going. I'm I'm excited to see who all's involved and you know so that that's going to be uploaded on your channel and you know you, you said you upload every Wednesday uh, just kind of like uh, yeah. So I, I upload uh, every Wednesday journal. and then throw a, a shorts video out there uh, kind of whenever. <laughs> I think I put one up yesterday. <laughs> yeah, as and when I can, you know, get the footage and do it. And like I, I'm, I like quite like this shorts uh, that YouTube have brought out. I think it's it's catching on really well, and it's quite good to be able yeah. to show off like little clips that wouldn't necessarily make it to a main video. Um, so yeah, so I do that kind of. There's no rhyme or reason or day or anything that I would put out of shorts. But my main videos, yeah, I upload on a Wednesday between sometimes it's half past seven, sometimes it's eight o'clock. It depends on whether the rest of the YouTubers that are host for the T, sorry, I was going to say TTSNT, which is Toronto the Tubers Saturday Night Takeaway, because sometimes uh, so like Kieran will upload on a Wednesday sometimes. So we try and schedule it so we don't clash with each other. And um, well, we've done it before where we've actually all done premieres back to back on a Wednesday as well, which is pretty cool. <laughs> And then everybody yeah. can hop over from one channel to the other. I like the way you all support each other uh, and each other's channels over there. It's, I, I like that a lot. Now, it's uh, the shorts. I mean, they're essentially YouTube ripping off TikTok <laughs> and, and Instagram reels. It's it's like their version of yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember hearing about that back in like October, uh, September, October. And it was only in India. Like it was just people that were watching YouTube in India that were able to see the shorts and uh, but one of the guys I follow on YouTube was saying, you should start doing it. And I'm like, I'm not going to like a 60 second video vertical. <laughs> like it's not, I don't want to make TikToks for YouTube. I'll just make them for TikTok. But I've started doing that as well. And it's, it's, it's cool because it reaches a, 
a different audience you know like it yeah. seems at least for my my channel it people that are watching the shorts and coming to my channel through that are people that really never would have come across my long form videos before so it, it's it's neat being able to kind of reach a different audience yeah i think it's i think it's really good i mean that uh, they kind of said at the minute that it's being trialed in india i do believe the shorts mm -hmm. uh, the shorts camera so whilst we can upload a shorts video apparently there's an actual going to be a shorts camera that's within the mobile uh, youtube app so it won't be on the desktop but it'll be on the mobile one where you just literally can just hit record record something and then straight upload it as a shorts yeah, yeah rather than having to kind of go about it as if it's a video and then uploading it yeah. as a video but i'm not sure how that will work i i don't know if i'm keen on because apparently it's only 15 seconds that you're allowed i'm kind of thinking well i don't think i can get 15 seconds you know <laughs> <laughs> takes me takes me sometimes a couple of minutes to get a tranche to just to be interested in food. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. <laughs> can't be restarting that fifteen seconds. <laughs> so you're you're on uh obviously YouTube, you've got a Facebook group, um and you have a pet rock and roll page on Facebook as I well. I do have right? a pet rock and roll page, yeah. Like that, follow you through there. And are you you're on Instagram? I I'm, I'm following you there. On Instagram. So it's the same and I pet rock and roll. I just literally just yesterday set up a TikTok. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to ask. Are you on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> that's, I was very much, I'm not going to have TikTok. I'm not going to do it. But I think the main kind of motivation for me was to try and reach more people with fatal fangs. Because, it, you know, whilst I want to reach and reach out to as many YouTubers as possible to come over and join it, I also want to let a lot of people know about it to come and watch it. Because that's uh, that's the biggest thing too is to get a, an audience to come and watch it, so that we I can promote all of these channels to the to the audience. Yeah. So yeah, so I thought, well, let's uh, let's do that. So I've only put one video up on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tarantula TikTok is definitely growing. Uh, when I first got on there, it was it, it there was a few channels uh, or accounts I don't know exactly what they're called that were uploading some tarantula videos, but it seems. Uh, recently, a lot of people are getting on there. I, I think Mr. Grindler's Creatures is on there. Yes, yeah. uh, alternative Inverts, I believe. Uh, but I've also seen like Exotic Slayer set up a channel and Ants Canada and Tarantula Cat and uh, Tarantula Havens on there now. He, Alex is posting some videos. So Bugs in Cyberspace, uh, Shapes in Nature. There's a lot of Invert. Uh, the Invert community on TikTok's growing a we're, lot. Right now. We're infiltrating it. That's what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> infiltrating yet another social media platform. <laughs> yeah, because when I first started posting videos, I would search uh, Jess's arachnids. I believe is is her name. Um, she's actually uh, not too far from me. She's in the next state over in Pennsylvania, and that's how I came across her. Like I was just searching tarantula videos on TikTok, and she had a lot of followers and getting a lot of views and i was and she's i'm actually gonna have her on the podcast here in the next month or two awesome. i'm very excited to, uh, to you know get to because she's like a, a, a invert breeder uh, so it, I'm, I'm interested to see that but i was like the, the, she, there was her channel and a few others and then 95 like 90 95 percent of the videos related to tarantulas on tiktoks were just uh kids using that app with a tarantula walking across your face yeah. <laughs> it's like what the majority of them were and then you had videos of people putting real tarantulas on their face and i'm like yeah, this isn't good we need to we need to have a better representation of the community on on this app so it's awesome that a lot of more people are, are starting to get on there yeah and it's it's a it's a weird it's a weird platform you know maybe i'm just an old man and and not totally <laughs> I yeah i don't want to get yet, i don't want to get sucked into it because apparently you can end up sitting there for hours just scrolling through it so yeah <laughs> it's like okay i'm just true. gonna follow some people that i know are actually on here um that's yeah. my bird i knew i knew it wouldn't be long before he started <laughs> <laughs> um and then, uh, yeah, then I'll upload some stuff, uh, but I'll try my best to not get sucked in by the, the actual social media side of it, to be fair. Well, um, that, that's, it's really cool, all the stuff you got going on. Um, it, your bird is apparently telling us it's time to wrap I think up so, yeah. I think that's, that's what he's saying. Like, he, I think he might be even <laughs> asking me to close the curtains because it's actually dark outside now, so he's quite good at alerting me. <laughs> but if I go upstairs in the evening and leave a light on, he will squawk until I come back down and turn the light off. <laughs> he's very well trained. Yeah. 
very cool. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being willing to come on the podcast. You got anything other than Fatal Fangs that's coming up in the near future you want to you know, make sure people know about? Um, from my channel point of view, perspective, um, i am obviously got the slings in with my M. Barfori female. And I don't know how many are in there still. They are now pretty nice size slings so i'd say that they're a good kind of two centimeters and i'm going to be getting them out of her enclosure but she is uh she's not aggressive she's very defensive very very defensive um so yeah that's going to be pretty cool to actually even do let alone film and create a video uh, and like yeah like i said i don't know still don't know how many slings are in there so, yeah, it'd be nice Exciting. to count them and actually find out. Um, so that's the biggest thing that I've got that's going to happen on my channel. And then, obviously, my Bracky Pal Mahamore repairing. Whilst they've been sitting here, I've been hearing them communicating with each other. So they obviously want to go nice. for it again, <laughs> which will be the fourth time, uh, which, uh, you know, that's good. It's promising, really, isn't it? So, yeah. <laughs> Fourth hope, time's a charm. Yeah, right? oh, well, hopefully I get you know an egg sack. I would love to get an egg sack from my but from that Palmori because I've had her since she was tiny, um, grew her up, and she's my pride and joy. So yeah, if I got an egg sack off her, I would be over the moon, absolutely over the moon. Yeah, <laughs> little baby Palmori is very cool. You can't say no, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's awesome. So uh, follow Pet Rock and Roll on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, check out her Facebook groups and pages in Balfouri Communal Club. The Fatal Fangs Three. Com um, it, it, that's just like a. There, there's you said there's two. Groups. Yes, there's two groups. There's Fatal Fangs Three contestants group and the Fatal Fangs fans group. Yeah, fans. And that's how you can uh, stay up to date with everything that's going on with Fatal Fangs. Make sure you know you're 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 plugged in and know when those videos are coming up and get involved in that community. And of course, subscribe to Pet Rock and Roll on YouTube. I'll have our link in the description of the video version of this podcast. Uh, or you can just search Pet Rock and Roll on YouTube and her channel will come up. It's got all kinds of very cool videos on there. And one last question before we wrap it up. Yep. Are you ever going to bring back Pet Rock and Roll Asks? Uh, I want to, yes. I do want to. Yeah. But the one thing that I did with Pet Rock Asks is I filmed it in the uh in, in my parents garden they have an amazing garden my parents do and i filmed all of pretty much all of it in their garden and i wanted to do that again with another series um, but then obviously we got put in lockdown to the summer i wasn't allowed to go to their house and then there was winter and i don't want to be filming it in the cold and now we're in lockdown again so <laughs> hopefully fingers crossed by this summer this year i will be able to do it again and get that up and running because a lot of people have asked for it yeah to, to be yeah. back and i would love to do it again yeah yeah maybe get now, when some you say garden people. yeah when you say garden the you mean like a backyard? The backyard, right? yeah, that... yeah. Okay. My parents, <laughs> like... they have theirs is pretty big, uh, and it's beautiful. The way that they keep it, you know, with flowers yeah. and, and everything. It's just, it's, it's just a, a really nice setting to record in. Uh, and I, I did pet rock asks there rather than in my in my house <laughs> in front of my yeah. variums. I... <laughs> I think I was talking to Danny from Keeper Cards, and he was referring to the gardens we have in the U.S. are are much larger than the ones they have over in the U.K. And I'm like, I don't have a garden. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, you have a garden? You're growing food? And he's like, No, no, your backyard, your yard. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> I do love how we say things differently. <laughs> yeah, little things, but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's how I first came across your channel. Uh, would you know just the algorithm was like, oh, you like tarantula videos? Well, watch this. And I was, and that was my first introduction to uh, to Amy in Pet Rock and Roll. No way. And That's you actually, so cool. Yeah. You actually asked me to be on, like to do an episode. And I think I was like busy at the time. I was like, well, give me a couple of weeks. And then you were like, never mind. I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing that right now. Well, I'll talk to you next year. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd done quite a few and I'd asked a lot of people and some people were like, I, yeah, maybe I can, maybe I can't. And um, I wanted to do it with like Tarantula Dan and didn't get around to doing it with him because I thought there's going to be a time where I actually you know, end the series so that I can do another one. I think I did, you know, about 10, 10 or 12 episodes, which 
you know, was enough for a series, in my opinion. And then I was definitely, definitely in the back of my mind, got it. I got a list of who I was going to ask to do do series two, and then it just, yeah, just didn't happen, unfortunately. But I will, I will do yeah. it. I will do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's how I found your channel, and when I first subscribed, I believe, because I I really appreciated the way you had edited those videos. Like it was, even though you weren't in the same room, you had. But it was it was kind of like a conversation yeah it was yeah <laughs> and i was like that's good like that's somebody that's putting some time and effort into creating a video not just like hitting record and talking at, while they're filming and you know just kind of like this long form stream of consciousness stuff conscious kind of um it, content it, you had you had actually taken some time and edited it. and like i was impressed with the video you just uploaded yesterday with um, <laughs> the fatal fangs three announcement i was like Wow, she really. She, I mean, the the lighting was immaculate. Like you were, you looked flawless. Thanks. And, and just the sound. I mean, it, the whole thing. I was like, wow, she she really did some work on this video, and it, it was impressive. So I, yeah. I, I it, applaud your effort. Thank you. Doing very there was a lot of thought that went into it beforehand. I was thinking about it for a good couple of weeks of what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. And I think the purple shirt. We, because with the shirt, you see Sam's always worn a purple shirt when he's done Fatal Fangs. Uh, so all of his Fatal Fangs videos, he's always wore this purple shirt. And it's become quite iconic. Um, and I was, yeah. everybody was like, well, are you going to have the purple shirt? Are you going to have the purple shirt? And I was like, I need to make this pretty special is how I get this purple shirt. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've tried to do that type of editing before. I know how. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it looked very good. So, uh, you know, good job and congratulations Thank on that. You. Congratulations on on doing this this whole Fatal Fangs three thing. Ah. It's uh, Thank you so quite much. Quite a responsibility. So, yeah, it is. But I'm I'm more than happy to take it on. Um, yeah, and I, even though Sammy's competing, so Sam obviously won't have any uh, kind of talk with the judges when they come to voting and stuff. But Sammy's still there. I can still message Sam and kind of say, you know. What about this? Or do you think we should do that and stuff? Just to kind of, he's got my back if you like. And then I've yeah. got Angela Barnett. She's always my sidekick. We make a good team. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> well, you. Amy, thank you so much uh, for coming on the no, podcast. No, thank you, Richard. And, uh, Honestly, it's always fun. And I guess I should say coming back on the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, this time it will definitely make it to air, so <laughs> people will be able to hear this one. I apologize Yay. for. Uh, <laughs> the last one <laughs> you I, it does give you the distinction of the first repeat guest on on the podcast <laughs> so yes. for all the trivia buffs out there uh even and it'll be like one of those tough trivia questions that the obvious answer will be somebody that was on there twice but you will technically have been the first person that was on there twice <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if i take that title i'm show. happy <laughs> <laughs> It'll it'll be just for the the, the most hardcore fans. We'll hardcore, that. you've got to be a hardcore fan, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, everybody, check out her YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the fatal fangs. Follow on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and pretty much any social media. I'm sure if she's not there now, she will be there soon. Uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you, Amy, and, and I really you. enjoy your content. And I appreciate Thank you coming you. on the podcast. Likewise, dude. Always enjoy cool. your content. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, make sure that you are, uh, you know, you can download the Exotic Pet Collective podcast anywhere that podcasts are available. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel, see the video versions there. And uh, as always, we'll see you all next Thursday. I upload every Thursday, so be sure to come back. We've got some exciting guests coming this year. Um, there's uh, Jess's Arachnids. We'll be talking to Peter from Bugs in Cyberspace. Um, I also, I'm, I'm going to be doing some collabs with... Uh, a couple of different podcasts that focus mainly on snakes and so we're going to be getting a lot more snake and i actually have a doctor uh from the local university that's going to be coming on talking about snakes and uh crayfish which is going to be interesting he's uh discovered some new species of crayfish and is going to come on and talk about those so we've got all kinds of exotic pets that will be uh discussed this year so thank you all for listening following subscribing all that and we will see you next thursday goodbye Bye-bye. <laughs> and that is a wrap. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. I appreciate it. You're so welcome. <laughs>